nobody trusts anybody now. We're all very tired. What is up, guys? Welcome to the 31 on 31 Creature Feature Debrief. Welcome back once again. We missed the last one, but we damn sure weren't going to miss this one. What is up, everybody? Welcome Friday afternoon. Looks like we got a lot of people in school. I applaud your decision. Uh, <laughs> look over around the horn. Brian, how are we doing today? Sorry, I just my, my butt cheeks clenched when I saw someone in the chat I got and it. realized I got it. it was a fake I got account. It. I got it. I got it. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, what was that question? <laughs> How are we doing today? <laughs> We're uh, good, tired, bent out of shape, and already got my back against the wall because I know this is just going to be an hour of me trying to defend my love for critters against someone who loves Friday the 13th. <laughs> there you go. Uncle Sean, how are we doing? Yo, yo. I am doing good. I actually basically took the the last week off from creating videos since I created my thirty one on thirty one. It just took so much out of me that uh, yeah. I had to had to take a little bit of a breather. It, it took me like yeah. twelve hours to edit mine, and um, so now I am back ready to talk more about the thing that caused me to take a week off. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> Pamela. Uh, so, so you're probably wondering why I look the way I do. That answer is threefold. Number one, this is a Halloween thing. Here's my getup for Halloween. Number two, uh, <laughs> the most famous part of Brian and I live goes back to an argument between oh, Friday for goodness 13th sake. and Friday 13th 5. So every time Brian sees me, I want him to see Pamela Voorhees' face. And uh, next week, Friday the 13th. So there's three. Uh, my, awesome. my son was an very good swimmer. So there's that. <laughs> so for those of you guys that are joining us for the first time uh if you don't know what 31 on 31 is every single october and then this year we've actually done it a number of times uh we get together we choose some franchises that all add up to 31 and we rank them on halloween this year we did creature features all four of our videos are live i'll put them in the video description once this is done but if you want to watch that now for pretext just go to each of our channels it's like four hours of content so have fun mm -hmm. with that uh, but today we put all of our averages together for all four of our scores, and we're going to give the official autop stream ranking of all of these films. So I got graphics for each one, where they officially stand, where our individual rankings are. We'll debate them. We'll have some fun, give some extra context, and uh, beat Brian up a little bit. So, a little. <laughs> <laughs> without further ado, guys, I well, you know what I think it must be said that. If you, if you were to watch all four or well, three of our videos, um, you would think that we we got together with some of our messaging. Oh yeah, I, when, when me and when I was watching Sean's video and his the 31, 29, and twenty eight were the same, I was like, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> this could be exactly the same. And then we yeah. went off on our own. Yeah, we, we went in our own ranking, but we said the yeah. same thing. Yeah, right, we said right. The same thing without without coordinating at all. Yeah. yeah, like you could look at some of the numbers uh, on the lists and be like, okay, they they disagree a good bit, but if you hear what we were saying, are at where we actually <laughs> yeah. fall on about the whole yeah. middle. Mm -hmm. I know, middle 15, middle yeah. gigantic section, very much the same exact thoughts. Because <laughs> you got you got to bet you got to bear in mind that even those, even though the positions vary to a really huge degree, we all pretty much accept half that list is absolute crap. At least the other yeah. half is pretty good. So. Yeah. Usually the top 10 is where I'm like, oh, this is where it starts to get hard. Mm. This list, I was like, what is 31? There's like seven <laughs> candidates. <laughs> that, that top five is stacked. Yeah, oh, yeah. 
for sure. Yeah. We all share at least four of the top five. That's, yeah. that's a unique thing that's never happened before. We all that's share. The, that's the best top, top five. five we've had on a 31 for that's me, without probably doubt. Probably accurate, yeah. I can agree. So, but then there's 26 others. So, yeah. <laughs> speaking of the one that officially landed on 31, and this is going to break our, uh, our our official member who's not here's heart. Jaws the Revenge. Jaws the Revenge came in at 31. Uh, I had it as my worst. Sean had it as his worst. CP gave it a slight edge over another film. Brian was slightly more forgiving. Mm. But uh, yeah, this is a movie that uh, I have never seen before until the day I recorded my 31 on 31. I have heard for my entire life how terrible this movie was. And I think I had heard it so much that my expectations were so Lower. far low that I watched it and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's not good. But I mean, whatever. Um, it's weird that Michael Caine is giving like a typical Michael Caine level performance in this movie. And then you see the shark so much, the whole storyline about the shark having like this cognitive ability to take revenge and follow them down the Bahamas. Like he can hear and echo location, the phone call. And, and maybe the a psychic link with Brody's wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where She's like having visions like, is my son in trouble now? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, that was yeah, a good yeah. little skit you had there too. <laughs> oh yeah yeah for sure the shining yeah, it, it was it, it was weird and when it got to that point when she just stops dead track she's like i was like are they really doing this she's just this is that mother instinct or is she linked with the shark and and then uh, yeah i don't know this one just this wasn't like i could probably re-watch some of the bad movies that are above this the rewatch factor i think is why this ended up 31 because i watched it and i'm like I, I already really don't like shark movies to be honest um forgot to put that in there uh i i um jaws and deep blue sea are about it for me yeah. and when you get to bad bad shark movies it's like you know double knives in the jugulars so yeah eh, 31 for me what i think uh, is impressive about this one is that it is just as stupid as all of these sci-fi original shark movies it, the premise wise is just as stupid as those but it doesn't know that it's stupid. It plays yeah. all mm. of it dead serious. Absolutely. And so it's not even so bad it's good. It's not, oh, it's so dumb you can have fun with it. You're just watching it like, I, I can't believe they thought this was a good <laughs> idea. And at times it's incompetent. Like when you watch the, the actual end of the movie where the, the, the shark is finally defeated – you have no idea what's happening. It's just cutting between images of stuff with no geography. I mean, it's incompetent, and it's a Jaws movie with a big budget. Michael Caine, the guy from The Last Starfighter, and it's just terrible. And I guess isn't his last this- line, isn't his last line, oh shit, in that movie too? Is that literally I, Michael Caine? I, I probably line? said it over him and didn't hear it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Brian, thoughts? Why is it 28? <laughs> <laughs> because the bottom half of this list is really good. It's just like I, I watched Jaws 2, 3, and 4 consecutively over three nights. And nice. uh, it was like, you know, that was torture anyway. But mm. the, the, I, I think... The on-screen presence of Michael Caine for me is just watchable, regardless of whatever he's in. Um, and whereas with number three, I was I was so bored, so like, and you're bored he, with like, three. hey, you're bored I'm with so, three. so so bored, so bored with three, so mm. bored. With three. Oh, I needed to mention something about two actually because we had a bit of a convo on Facebook, but um, you want to say wait. yeah. Just uh, like number 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 three, I just I just I was so bored, and I was like, the more bored I was getting, I was just like, it's okay, hold out, because we got the three D stuff coming soon. Oh. Oh, yeah, I know. I, this this is a film that was sold on three D, and, and it was just literally a shark 
swimming in slow motion <laughs> in a it's really crap shot. Oh, it, it, was a, it was an part. image it placed like in yeah. front of her. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, like it literally yeah. had no redeeming features. So it, that was the toss up. Uh, Revenge won out simply because of Michael Caine and simply because they got the original actress back from the first two Jaws mm. films. Yeah. So it felt like it was a bit more in continuity. Um, but they're both crap. Mm. Fair enough. Coming in right above that at number 30. I'm sure Brian's happy about this. Is Critters Attack. Yeah. Number 30. Brian, it matched your ranking. Uh, yeah. I had it at 28. CP had it at 29. Uncle Sean had it at 26. This was another first time watch for me, along with basically that entire franchise. So um, before we get into it, Brian, tell us about the Critters franchise. Look, I. I love you. Just that wasn't that. me, for the record, Brian. Oh I had my God. To do it. <laughs> I'm so tempted to pull my pants down and stick my ass in the camera. To be honest, no, no. Oh. Open that. Open that. Are you fan for that? Oh. <laughs> Are we done? <laughs> Are we quite no. done? No, we're just getting started. <sighs> Uh, well, Brian was the hardest on, on Critter's Attack, to be, to be fair. <laughs> can I just say, can I just say, considering I'm getting labeled as the Critter's Boy, Cody ranked Critter's 2 higher than I did. The only one, the only one of the Critter's franchise that I actually ranked really high is that first film, which is the only one that I've ever claimed to be a huge fan of. It's that It was my favourite film as a kid. I've got a lot of nostalgia from it. Three and four are pretty crap, but I can watch them and enjoy them because of my nostalgia for the first one. And the second one is just quite enjoyable. I ranked Critters Attack lower than any of you suckers, <laughs> and you rank flipping Critters 2 higher than me. So technically, that makes you the Critters fanboy. <laughs> See, yeah, it's true. Quit all this yeah, crap. True. Thank you very much. Yes. So, speaking of fanboys, science, Jesse, right there. we'll die on the hill that Jaws 4 is a fun movie, and our girl Mother Mayhem will stand with him. Oh. Brian, seriously, this time now. Mm -hmm. Critters Attack. Tell us about uh, your excitement level, whatever it was at before this came out, and then your emotions after watching it. My excitement level was high because I figured that, you know, like these days we're going back and we're re revisiting a lot of old horror movies from the 80s. You know, like we got Halloween kind of coming back. There's a lot of talk of Friday and stuff coming back. Even though, and we've had like fan films that have been good with that. We've got a lot of talk. <laughs> yes, uh, we've got a lot of talk about Nightmare on Elm Street coming back. That's already had a remake and, you know, okay, I get it. Fans weren't happy, but it was still of a high production value. Um, you know, we've we had uh, it kind of being brought back and, and redone and we've got this all this harkening back to the 80s with programs like Stranger Things and stuff like that. So for me, that was a prime, prime time really to 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 take something that was key in the eighties and and bring it back, update it, and really go to town on it. Um, and I thought, you know, I thought that's what they'd do. I thought so, somebody with a love for that original film has probably come along. They're going to bring it back, and that got me excited. Um, so when what we got was the most half-assed, low budget straight to dvd crap that like i would have expected this film to come straight after critters 4 back in the 90s um and it probably would have been more acceptable as a result so like, all right franchise have been crap pretty much since three you know three and four are crap films i accept that i show as much in my ranking so I would expect Critters Attack to come straight after that, and yeah, boom. But it's not. It came 20-odd years afterwards on the back of a lot of 80s nostalgia and a lot of films being kind of redone, so to speak. So, yeah, so that's that, I think, is where the major disappointment lies, is that actually this isn't 
this is hasn't been picked up by anyone who's got a love for that original film. This has been picked up by a studio that wants a brand name and an established mm. brand name that they can attach themselves to, throw out a quick, a quick cheapy, and 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 make a bit bit of money on it, a few bucks, and and it just stunk to me, absolutely stunk. Like I say. I love the first movie, still love it. I think it's still a great film. The sequels, I can take or leave them. I don't really care. When I say I'm a Critters fan, it's because of that first movie. Well, and thank God it, we watched really. five of them for yeah. that one. But uh, I still have fun with two, three, and four. I do, but I fully accept that three and four are crap movies. Um, but, yeah, Critters Attack, for me, when when it was announced, I was like, this, it's a real opportunity, real chance to take that first film take the love that fans have for that first film and and really go to town on it cashing it get that nostalgia back but they didn't they blew it it was crap it was disrespectful and i hate it did you like it all what they did with d williams d wallace no. d wallace <laughs> Different movie. Billy d. Williams. Uh, no no i didn't i didn't at all was it because of the execution or just the idea in general you don't like both she's she's not that character she, you know even by the end of the first critters film she's she's not becoming that character she's a stay-at-home mom who looks after her kids and and her husband and and is i get what she what she's gone through is going to strengthen her is going to make somewhat different as a character but not to the extent where she's going to be tooling up with guns and and you know, working out from a, a secret underground base where she... No, sorry. Just crap. Absolute crap. Uncle Sean, what was your thoughts yeah. on Critters Attack? I think that was your first watch too, right? Yeah, my first time watching it. Um, you know, it it was just interesting that there was this 25-year gap and there was just no, <laughs> no adjustments. Lessons learned. <laughs> no lessons learned. No ways in which they updated the pacing, the vibe, the aesthetic. It to what Brian said, felt like it might have just, it could have come out in 1995 and you wouldn't know the girl. difference. It's a girl it's, critter. It's, it's true. <laughs> well, even I, even to that point, like my understanding from doing a little research, the original critters, they didn't want it to be like gremlins and so they made adjustments to try and <laughs> depart it from gremlins. What do they do in this one? They introduce the queen gremlin who's essentially functions as gizmo. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, it, uh, this one was maybe a little bit more tolerable than three or four for me because I, I didn't I binged one through four, mm. paused for a week and then watched this one. So maybe it was just better state of mind. I also went in without expectations. So there was a little bit of a having the queen changed things up a little bit. I was a little bit maybe mildly intrigued by mommy bounty hunter. But, Same. Um, you know, it it's not a movie I'm looking to re-explore ever. I learned. Uh, I, I took a page out of CP's lesson book, and I did not binge the Critters franchise. <laughs> Otherwise, it probably would have been much lower. CP is famous, especially in our after shows, where he's like, "Yeah, I watched all nine of the Texas Chainsaws in three days." And we're like, "Oh, that's why they're up so low." Uh, so I watched Critters one, waited a week, watched two, waited a week, watched three, immediately watched Gremlins two, which probably was not. I, that's what favorite. I did. I intertwined Gremlins with Critters 2, and I was like, nah, yeah. that was a mistake. And, and for me, by the time I got through 3 and 4, the only thing that saved Critters' attack from 30 for me was just the gore. Uh, because at, at that point, you could lay pretty much all the criticisms of that movie against 3 and 4, but at least 4 had some, or at least Attack had some carnage candy. Uh, so I, I kind of enjoyed that. I, I was intrigued with the... The D. Wallace thing, it didn't really go anywhere, but I was like, okay, right. I, I'm at least intrigued to where this might go. Whereas three was like, wow, okay. And then four was like, oh, uh, this is like Alien Resurrection with two critters that don't do anything the whole movie. Uh, so yeah, CP. The thing that I give this movie credit credit for at 29 credit uh <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not being 31 yeah is is the uh, fact that it actually you know they could have taken the complete cynical approach and just cg the hell out of this but mm -hmm. there's actual puppet work like the the effects and everything there's actually you know all those critters and stuff they're 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 physically there so you yeah. know there's some sort of effort put in put into that aspect i mean they really could have cut corners but but didn't 
in in that aspect. So I, I kind of appreciate the fact that they tried there. Yeah, that's about it. I was surprised by that too. I thought it was going to be CG. Yeah, it, it's a sci-fi movie, right? It was yeah, a sci-fi yeah. Yeah, see, I just had to order it on Amazon, so I didn't really watch it on TV. Or if I would have known going in it was sci-fi, I'd have been like, oh, they're going to $2 CG the hell yeah. out of this thing. Yeah. I think we all agree. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> right above that, just narrowly edged out at 29 is Critters 4, Critters in Space. I had it at 29. Uncle Sean had it at 29. CP had it at 28. Brian had it a little bit higher at 25. Um yeah, a point that Brian made in his 31 on 31 that I thought of immediately, um, and I thought that was pretty f- good to hammer on, was that it's basically the same getup as Alien Resurrection. It's got it's got Brad Dorf in it, uh, the space station. Now, I wasn't really worried about this one when I went into it, because usually you think the space one, that's where it's all going to go to hell. Leprechaun in space, <laughs> Jason X, a lot of people would say. Uh, but for some reason with Critters, I was like, you know, maybe space will save it. Maybe that'll be, you know, it, it feels spacey. There's, you know, the bounty hunters and everything. Maybe it'll be cool. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't do much with it. Um, Sean, I'll start with you. Critters yeah, 4. I, I mean, I, I, I thought I had a little bit more schlock fun with this one than I did with 3. Yeah. Um, You know, they're, they're borrowing from the best with the Alien franchise. But they just really don't do much with it. And turning the bounty hunter guy evil with no explanation. It's like, mm. let's take a guy that we really liked from the first two and just make him the supervillain. <laughs> it naturally puts a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I loved it. Yeah, it was, it was number one on my list. It should have been. Loved it. <laughs> CP. A- Alien Resurrection came oh, three years after this okay oh wow and it's practically the same plot um look critters 4 main problem is it there's no critters in it yeah, it's, it's like, like it's it's a bunch of people walking around a space station and you're waiting for like it's it's you know it's not a highbrow franchise so if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna make one of these things put a lot i mean that's the only thing critters attack got right is yeah. that they they put a load of critters in it and they put a load of carnage in it. It's just that all the main characters in it were just sickeningly detestable. But Critters 4, main problem, there's no critters in it. So it's like they, they, they take ages to show up, and when they do show up, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of them, and that's it. They're done with. Yeah. So They roll through some vents like John McClane, yeah. and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I said, that, that was the only, the only sliver of something that saved – Critters attack for me, uh, and it was immediately followed by four, which I was like, "Oh my god, there's nothing going on." But uh, I don't know. I, I think I gave like a tenth of a point for having Brad Dorif in it, and that's what gave it the slight sliver over three. But they they're basically interchangeable for for me. Those last three of them, uh, CP Critters four. Yeah, I it's space. There's like a a seven way tie for thirty first, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. everything you said. Uh, Except uh, a, a little bit less. <laughs> like, it was a little bit higher for me because I, I wasn't quite wrung out by the franchise just yet. But that everything you guys said, if you if you, if you come to me last, I'll have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of nothing to say, number twenty-eight. Oh. Creepers, creepers, three. Uh, CP had this at dead last, which shocked me for all of the pretext of Ryan revenge that we had. <laughs> he gave 31 to the creeper. Uh, I had it at 27. Uncle Sean had it at the highest at 24. Brian had it at 29. Um, yeah, this movie, the biggest thing for me is just being in the context of a Jeepers Creepers fan. Not a Victor Salva fan, for all of you in the comment section, but a fan of the franchise, a fan of the Creeper. This movie was a long time coming after two. And there was like a decade of like going online, seeing that it was greenlit. And he kept giving this story synopsis about we're going to get Trish back. We're going to have the old man from the second one who is sitting there with the gun at the end. They're going to team up. We're going to find the origins of the creeper and it's going to be a big epic showdown for the third final movie. And I was like, yes, that's, that's perfect. That's exactly what it should be. And for like seven or eight years, that's what they kept saying. 
And then the last year or so, when this thing finally got traction, finally found a place to get shot that didn't, you know, cut production out when they found out who was directing it. He just gives this movie that's like a stepping stone to the movie he's promised us for seven or eight years. Mm. Like nothing happens. The creeper's there. You get a, a arm that comes out of the sky that gives people the shining and they can see his origins, but we don't get to see it. And then it ends on, but stick around because next time we're going to get to that movie. And uh, quite obviously we're not <laughs> because the movie made pennies. Uh, if he had as much trouble as he did getting this one made, good luck getting a fourth one made. Unless they rip the franchise from his claws, which I think they probably can't do for legal reasons. He so might they, own it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They could have. They if they could have done it with three, they would have. So I have zero faith uh, as a Jeepers Creepers fan that we are ever going to get that movie. And I despise this movie for that because it's just you watch it and nothing happens. Uh, Sean, you had it the highest. I'll start with you. Yeah, I, I have no skin in the Jeepers Creepers game. Um, I want an interesting analogy. It was not <laughs> unintentional. It wasn't fully intentional either, though. But it was crossing my mind as I said it, and I wish that was pretty good. I wish I could have cut to that final shot of the the first movie. Um, so, you know, I saw the first one in the theater. I saw the second one. I think as soon as it came out on video, and I hadn't really thought about them too much since. They weren't movies that they were like, okay, cool, I'm fine with that. If I ever see it again, cool but never re-explored them. Yeah. And so I hadn't watched this one until, you know, three weeks ago whenever I watched it for this video. So I had no kind of investment in it. I didn't know the backstory. I'd heard the guy was a creep, but I didn't even know the specifics on it. Mm-hmm. And so watched the movie, and it was like, okay, more Jeepers Creepers stuff. Like, they didn't, of all the things you, like, my only thought was like, like I just was had just watched the second one. I was like, oh, 15 years have passed. They can they can go somewhere with that. That guy is now, obviously, almost 23 years past. We can do that. Mm. Cool. And Surprise. then the movie starts off and is like, no, we're not doing that. We're doing all this other stuff. And so, like, I, did, I didn't hate it, I, but I didn't have any investment. I didn't have any expectations. I hadn't heard necessarily great things about it, but I hadn't really heard much at all. So I just kind of went, okay. That, that was kind of my take on it, like more Creeper stuff. Some interesting shots here and there in general. Nothing that made a big impact, though. But nothing that... Like, I didn't leave it with disappointment that you would have with mm-hmm. 15 years of like, oh, man, he's going to do he's going to do this. And these people get it. I didn't have any of that. So, yeah. And That's I probably if I'd known that it also would have shaped my opinion, I imagine, because oh, that yeah. does sound like a much better plot. Absolutely. CP, why is it 31? Yeah, I I, I, I perhaps unfairly brought all of the outside baggage yeah. to to watching this. Like, all right, it's it's been it's been almost two decades mm-hmm. you, you, you almost have the official timeline you might as well have it take place eight years in the mm-hmm. future whatever and uh we, we got we got that um all daytime stuff uh the one thing that i really liked about jeepers creepers 2 was all that stuff with with a bus i mean night just helps horror I, it, yeah. it's just i don't know it just comes with the book 101 nighttime horror period um but then three is there, everything's in the daytime. All the slow mo shots of him running, just what what are we wasting our our production effort on? Like, is he our hero? This 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 creeper character. What? Why so many slow mo shots? And it's just it doesn't explain anything. I, I'm I was actually more confused by it because it's it takes place sideways, right? It it doesn't take place. Like on a linear path, it's it's, it's a Al- it's, alongside the it's, it's just before the second one and alongside the first one, kind of yeah, well, yes, between the first and second one. So yeah, yeah. I, 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 not so stupid. Yeah, not the kid where they're like, oh, I'm gonna throw this Letterman jacket on at the last minute. You yeah. are not in Jeepers Creepers three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> I guess he got out at the the rest stop and they just kept going. Yeah, yeah. The there's, there's, thing is, it's, it's a prequel to a sequel, and that's the problem. If you're going to do a prequel, you do a prequel to the first film. Because, yeah. yeah. but when you do it between the two, then it does feel like, well, this this is completely unnecessary. Then, because right. if right. it was necessary, we would have had it already. Yeah. It almost it, feels like um, they, like like he had six months to make something, or he lost the rights, and he was like, "Oh shit! Oh, I'm not do this." <laughs> well, I mean, even that they tried to do that little twist at the end to be like, "Hey, let's tie it all together," 
as if that would be a big reveal, as if that would be really impactful. Like, oh, guy that I don't remember from that other movie turns out to be this guy that I'm not going to remember from this movie. Oh, let, Come let on. me go watch the movie that already exists that yeah. they're, they're they're leading into. <laughs> yeah, it didn't help matters for me too that the sheriff, like the big badass guy that's going to go against the creeper in the end with that big gun. The only other thing I've seen him in is he's the tattoo friend of Sinbad and Houseguest. And I'm like, that guy's going to take down the creeper. Okay. Okay. Whatever, Victor. Another slow-mo shot. Yep. It did. I did appreciate your editing on Thank that you. one, CP. <laughs> it's just quite music. It's it. Like, you, you, you did ask before, CP, like, is, is this the guy? Is this guy the hero? Is the creeper the hero? And it's like, in a sense, you know, it's a slasher film. So, yeah, that figure that does tend to be shit. the one that... But it's it well it's 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 Nightmare on Elm Street sequel stuff actually, but and, and most Friday the Thirteenth sequel. Once you get into those late sequels, you they literally are positioning you to root for the, the yeah killer. the yeah um, the later so, ones. Sure. So that it's not that stuff that bothers me. What bothers me is like like we've said, it's the time you've had to get this thing together, and primarily now, regardless of what you think of Victor Salva. Let's just pretend for a moment you didn't know his history and you only had his films to go on. So regardless of that, that first film is a bloody good film. Oh yeah. It's so yeah. well it's so well done. The suspense levels in it are so well done. The, the the creature design is great. It takes really dark twists and turns that you don't see coming. Because I went into Jeepers Creepers not knowing a thing about it. I'd never even heard of it. We just went in blind at the cinema. Same. And it's just, it's just this kind of dark hitcher style serial killer plot. And then boom, turns into this monster movie. And you're like, flipping heck. It's like almost a from dusk till dawn style kind of twist of a movie in which it's one thing and then it turns into another thing. So yeah. I loved it, you know. So this this is like whoever this guy is, whatever, facts of the matter is he can give us Jeepers Creepers. Um, okay, he gave us Jeepers Creepers too. It's not great, but it's still a fun ride. But it can't, you know, he still gave us that first film, and then you get to the third one, and you're like, "What the heck is the drop off with this <laughs> franchise?" Yeah, um, like, it, you know, if, if if it was a different writer director, if it was different people coming in and taking over, you know, like you look at all of these 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 big slasher franchises they usually start off with great directors you know like friday the 13th not included so you've got like halloween with john carpenter you've got nightmare on elm street with wes craven you know like big big franchise starters and then they exit they go off and then the sequels are like diminishing returns because they bring in these b-listers who you know are just going to put it straight to video and, and do a competent enough job and that's what the sequels to this franchise feel like and by the time you get to the third one, it it really does feel like those terrible straight to DVD sequels that had nothing to do with the original writer director. This franchise doesn't have that excuse. It's the same guy in charge all the way through. But he had this great film to begin with and then completely lost the plot. This third film is an absolute poo fest, quite <laughs> frankly. It just it wants dumping in the bin and forgetting about. On that note, number 27, Critters 3. 25 for CP. I had it at 30. Uncle Sean had it at 30. Brian had it just slightly above CP at 24. Um, this is the one for me where I was actually kind of surprised that I disliked it as much as I did. I thought there was going to be more novelty in seeing young um Leonardo. Leo. Yeah. I, I remember <laughs> seeing this movie. I, I can I can almost like picture myself like photographically watching this on like Cinemax or something when I was like eight or nine and just seeing pieces of it and thinking, oh cool. Because you know when you're a kid, you never care if the movie started at the beginning, you just put it yeah. on. Oh, that's the guy from Growing Pains. I'm gonna watch this. And I, I this is the only critters movie that I had some previous experience with. So I watched it expecting it to be kind of fun, like okay. I, Oscar Darling, who only won one Oscar, Leo, going back, seeing how he started off. And I watch it, and it's just like, aside from a little bit of fun seeing him, it was just like, 
what's going on? What did we forget about the second film that just thought, let's go bigger with the second one? And this one's just like, no, let's go to an apartment complex. Yeah. That's a great setting for a horror film. And have did a they- lot of dialogue about the landlord trying to kick them out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, they had enough critters to make a, a huge ball of critters in the second one. And I think I could count as many critters as there were in the third one on my hand. I don't think they showed critters very much in, in this movie. No, the, I think the most critters you saw was when he pushed his stepdad or whatever into the room and like four of them turned around like, hey, and then that was it. Was uh, there that many? Hmm. Okay. It's like maybe four or five of them, but yeah. I don't remember seeing four or five of them, you know, kicking right. ass about the movie. It was right. like one or two isolated. It always movies. seemed like it was like two or three. Or yeah. Like and then two. ending ending on that weird cliffhanger, too, was kind of like, okay. Like, and then I found out that they shot them back to back after I saw that scene where it's like, you got to don't kill the eggs. We've been spending three movies sending people across galaxies to kill all these things, but don't kill them now. We've changed our minds. <laughs> By the way, worst bounty hunters ever. Um, <laughs> oh my god Brian Critters 3 Knew it Knew you were going to do that Critters 3 Knew you were going to do that <laughs> Did you grow up with Critters 3 as well Or did this one um, Was it after loving the first one for so many years Hmm. That's all I got. I I, I, I didn't see Critters Three until uh, about ten years ago, so I was I was you know touching thirty. Like I say, I grew up with the first one in particular, um, and when I was in my late teens, the second one came on TV, and because of my love for the first one. I watched the second one and thought I like it. It's it's good. It's fun, but uh, I'll I'll keep the th- I'll keep the first one. Thanks. Um, and then that was that was kind of it, really. I just kept with the first one. And then when I was about twenty eight, twenty nine years old, I saw a box set in a second hand shop with all four Critters films on. Having never seen three and four, I was like, yes, get in. Um, bottom. <laughs> bottom. I, I like I say, still loved the first one, liked the second one, the third and fourth one. What kind? Of, they were that kind of weird thing where you have a bit of, you have that kind of denial about it because you have such a love for the original film. It's I, I equate it to these weird Freddy fans who still insist that Freddy's Dead is a good film, even though, you know, just because they've, they love that original so much and they, they have to eat up everything in the franchise. Oh, um, you mean like Friday the 13th fan films? Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, so it, it's like, yeah, it's it's not good. Uh, it's not well made, but I, I, I can enjoy it. I can enjoy the cheesy factor of it, and I do think there are some enjoyable moments in it, to be honest. DiCaprio. Can't, Maybe can't a little bit too harsh on it. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Now I got one that Brian's going to open up for me because he's got lots of thoughts on Jaws 3D. Oh. This was Brian's 31. Wow. Uh, I had it at 26. CP had it at 26. Sean had it a bit higher at 18. Woo! I'm Sean. assuming some nostalgia in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. Marriage. This, Marriage. Sean, this, did you trip? Answer. Did you trip when you were writing or something? <laughs> no, I think no, you did. Uh, marriage thing. <laughs> marriage thing. Let's you know what? Let's open up with Brian. Thirty-one, and then I'm going to go straight. How to dare Sean. you? My Sean's wife loves this story. movie. She takes this personally that you would have it at thirty-one. Doses. If tell you me. tell her to come get live on camera, that would be awesome. Hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll send a very aggressive text her way. <laughs> just, Lies, just tell yeah. her Brian's about to uh, say why it's no. I just, I've already said it. You know, I, I, I said it before. It's just boring. It's like as bad as Jaws: The Revenge is. Um, for me, the worst thing you can do in a film is bore your audience to death. What are you doing, CP? That's a 3D effects. I'm doing 3D Pardon? effects, mind you. Why do you think everything I'm doing is trying to derail you? The guy literally puts a video on Because you spend of so much of your time trying to derail me that I can only assume everything you're doing is an attempt to derail me. 
Airbag. Airbag. You give what's his face lessons in airbag. <laughs> yes. Airbagging, just like that. <laughs> oh, John, what's the marriage story? What number are we? Uh, my wife just <laughs> loves Jaws is her favorite movie. She loves bad shark movies. So um these ty- I'm just a little bit more adapt to, or used to watching probably more throw away bad shark movies. It's got Dennis Quaid, Luis Gossett mm. Jr., Lee Thompson. Um, you know, there's just a lot of schlock value for me mm-hmm. in the Sea World environment. Um, you know, anyone that has it at 31, I get it. <laughs> like, this next, like, this, <laughs> I'm not going to try and convince anyone. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what, you don't like this movie? <laughs> yeah, come on, yeah. Even the 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 transfer of the movie, the, they put out a new mm-hmm. Blu-ray set of two, three through two, 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 two through four. Easy for you to say. It came out last month, like it is brand new. I buy it, get it when it ships new for this video, and the Blu-ray transfer for this movie is horrendous. Mm. It is the worst looking transfer I have ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the rough. entire movie looks like there's a snow filter on it. And I'm yeah. not exaggerating. Yeah. I was literally I have a rip out. on my video, yeah. I was literally taking pictures of my TV and I was like, I don't know if this will show up. I was like, oh nope, it shows up. <laughs> it's like I you know it's 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 crap, but it's my kind of crap. Mm-hmm. It's it's mm-hmm. rewatchable crap for me. Oh rewatchable really? Oh, Maybe I mean, that's the wrong word, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's or actually the, fra- the way to phrase it would be of things that act like playing the real world. What actually get has been played more times in my house over the last decade? Wow, that's a Jaws choice. three. Wow, okay. Like I said, Jaws wh- three is wh- the wh- most. My wife will. She'll go and she'll get sharks in Venice. She'll like. Oh, look at this one. Looks pretty good. Sharks. Like, I, I watched both Deep Blue Sea and Deep Blue Sea Three opening weekend. Paid twenty dollars to watch them. That's my household. So you, you evaluate the world a little bit differently in those scenarios. <laughs> I want to see sharks in Venice now. Wait a <laughs> It's like Casper Van Dien or something like that starring in it. Someone that had a really big hit movie back in 1997 stars in Sharks in Venice. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Jaws 3D, much like Critters 3, I have small memories of seeing pieces of Jaws 3D on TV, and it's only scenes with Louis Gossett Jr. I never realized Dennis Quaid was in this movie. I never realized that Marty McFly's mom was in this movie. For some reason, I just remember Shark, SeaWorld, Lewis Gossett Jr. Uh, but yeah, this was the first time watching the movie all the way through. A lot of the same criticism as for the only thing that made it slightly better for me was the cast. Um, the, the cast of three, I felt knew, knew a little bit more what movie they were in um, than right. four did. Um, and there was something, I, I think I just got a little bit of a gut laugh when I got to that scene where the, the, the sharks had enough and it's just going to take out that, that big glass. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my God, this is, this is the eighties. This is awesome. Um, so yeah, for <laughs> small reasons like that, I was like, okay. lingers there for five seconds. See, it's in 3D. And they cut, oh, yeah. they cut it back with the cast and they're horrified. They're like, no! <laughs> There's one in the shot, worst the slow-mo like... ever. Yeah. Put the sugar down! <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Put that cookie down now! <laughs> Speaking of Arnold, no, we're not quite there yet. 25. No. Aliens versus Predator Requiem. Oh. Brian oh. had this much higher than everybody else at 18. I had it at 24. And CP and Sean are pretty close at 27 and 28. Uh, This is a movie that just, I think when I first saw it, I liked it a lot more than I did over time because it was a lot gorier. Mm -hmm. And I was like, where was this in the first AVP? Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you open your eyes or watch it during the daytime, you're like, where's the movie? Mm -hmm. Uh, So this (laughs) this is a weird one. (laughs) This is a weird one because it's so dark. And every time you say that, you think like, oh, it's just dark tone. No, it's just dark. They had like a budget for two lights, I guess. Uh, The creature effects are pretty good. It's a little bit more uh, like maybe stylistically what you would want from an AVP movie. But um, for some people, I think it goes too far. I think Sean mentioned that where there's there's some really 
strange directions they take some of the carnage in it. Um, <laughs> John, I'll transition to you for that one. Yeah, I mean, it's just a movie that just feels distasteful, so you can't even have fun with it. Like, I, like, I know we are watching alien movies. I know we're watching predator movies where soldiers are skinned alive and creatures burst out of chests. But when you're in the first ten minutes and, a, 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 like, an eight-year-old gets a face hugger and you're like, oh, a creature's going to just jump out of that kid's chest. Oh, fun. And then, I mean, they literally go into a hospital and a xenomorph walks into a room full of babies and is, like, licking its lips like, can, mm, snacks. Can I just pause you there, Sean? Can I just put Because I need to call you out on something that you said in your own 31 on 31 okay. video. And it's with regards to It Chapter 1, which you praised for killing a kid in the opening scene because it set up that nobody was safe throughout the rest of the film. Okay, okay. So, you know, I... I to me, it's not distasteful. I pers I get why there'll be there'll be a certain quota of the audience that doesn't want to see that kind of stuff, and that's fine. Don't see it. But for me, those are the same people who are not going to want to watch it. But I, for for me, in a horror movie, if you kill a kid, then you know no one's safe. And I think that's that that applied to it, chapter one, and I think it applies to this one uh, just as equally. Yes, they go a bit further because they go with a, a room full of pregnant women, um, but it's it's just. I don't know. I just for me, it's not about distaste. It's about blimey, that's hardcore. I, I um, think I think the baby thing is where the line is for a lot of people because I'm kind of that way too. Like in Halloween 2018, whenever he snapped the kid's neck in the first mm. time, I was like, "Oh, okay, this is going to be interesting." And then later on in that movie, he walks by the crib, and you're like, "No, no," yeah. and like your gut just starts to do this, and it's the same film. And, and that's kind of how I feel about this one. Like whenever you get babies involved, for some reason, that's just ickier. Like, yeah, yeah I can watch a three-year-old getting, you know, you know in the, the predator action or whatever, but you throw an infant in there. I'm like, oh, yeah. isn't, isn't that what the alien franchise is kind of born on though? This whole metaphor for impregnation. I mean, that that's kind of the, what the whole series was, was built on is this, this impregnating your, your, uh, 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 yeah. Well, that's that's well, that's the fear that it's mm. it's tapping into, isn't it? I mean, it's so, it's about so much more than that as well. I mean, I, I I still say that the first Alien film is 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 rape. It's well, it's, it's just as much about AI uh, as well, you know. Uh, uh, sure, a lot, a lot of stuff going on with uh, the character of Ash and uh, mm -hmm. what he's fe is he feeling or not feeling, you know? Just like that scene where he's jogging up and down because it's like he's getting worked up about. The prospect of what they're about to bring onto the ship and it's just like oh strange behavior for an android there so it's, it's just um yeah I, I i think you're right there's an there's an element about the fear of impregnation and uh i i just i just how that you know how that applies in a great thematic way i don't think they've used it in you know in any kind of intelligent thoughtful thematic way in alien versus predator 2 i think they've just thought what's the sickest thing we can get away with boom let's do it uh but it, it, and i think it that's i think my issue <clears throat> like it what happens in the first 10 minutes drives the character's yes. actions it yes. has ramifications it's a it's not just like what's like the most horrific thing we can do and mm. you know the kid getting the face hugger on him uh, like I, I that's the first thing i started with like that was like okay, I'm not crazy about this, but that was it was very much pregnant woman who's about to go into labor, and then xenomorph comes in. Like, just when you're just trying to be as nasty as you can with this, it's like yeah. okay, at some point in time you're going to cross the line and do something yeah. that I'm think is too <clears throat> nasty, and they cross the line. And so I think that's the difference. Like I could definitely hear what you're saying. Of, I think that I think I think it's a good thing to. Uh, I think what they could have done is like say. Kit, kill the kid at the start with the, the face hugger and thing um because <laughs> that does start. start yeah because that no because it sets it sets up the idea that no one's safe and then if you have the scene in the maternity ward um but somehow the the, the somebody stops the aliens from being right, able to actually right. kill them then you've had that tension of well we've yes. already seen a kid mm -hmm. die now now you feel this real unease because you're not sat there thinking, oh, they're not, they're not going to kill a load of maternity. We've just seen them kill a kid. Right, so exactly, feel, exactly. But because they actually do kill them, you're like, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, I think, and so, I think that's very much the difference. Because like, same with Jaws. Mm. I don't know if, I'm, if it's in the video or not, but like, I same thing. They kill a kid at the beginning, so mm -hmm. you know everyone is in danger. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, 
as Cody said, as I've repeated, I mean, when you're actually like certainly implying that a xenomorph ate a room full of babies that just is like <laughs> but dang oh, and, 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 because, <laughs> and also because it's like these are, it's like a fan fiction movie it's stocky fun and it's tough to be like joey we're having fun and then it's like oh that's that's a really gross idea at the same that's i think it's that mix of a movie that's just totally not doesn't have a remotely serious tone vibe concept also doing things that are like really horrific, truly horrific. It's the, I think that's where for me this one comes off distasteful. Yeah, I agree. Um, Twenty four. So we've already just started talking about Jaws a little bit. Transitioning back into Jaws two. Brian had it at nineteen. Sean had it at nineteen. So they liked it a good bit more than us. CP. We it's had it at twenty three. Average and, works out. Yes, mm-hmm. we had it at twenty three and twenty four. <laughs> <laughs> I think for a lot of these, whenever they get the same score, there's some there's some other math involved with that. Yeah, there's yeah. If there's a TV tie, <laughs> if there's a tie, whatever has the highest ranking amongst the the group goes above something. Uh, else. Yeah. Gotcha. It's okay. happened a couple of times in this list. Yeah, I figured they'd get close at the bottom yeah. and at the top. So yeah, yeah. so twenty four. Uh, like I said, we, me and CP were pretty close. Sean and Brian were identical. Uh, this is a movie that you know me and CP had the same thoughts with this one where I remember liking it more mm-hmm. and then I watched it and I was like what the hell was I watching before um I, I there was a time in my life I think as a kid that I liked Jaws 2 more because Jaws 2 shows the shark more um and, and Jaws is a little bit above a kid's head past a certain point of the movie so um when I watched it this time I was like okay it's it's like the the skeleton of Jaws with none of the meat, none of the bones, none of the, or, well, I guess it has bones with the skeleton, none of the meat, none of the guts. Um, and, and you get Roy Schreider back and it's like, okay, that's cool. But then it just doesn't feel like his character is as strong without the the characters that are missing. Um, and so the whole movie is basically just waiting for the shark to kill these kids that you don't care about. Yeah, or, yeah. or Roy Schreider comes in and, and, and saves the day. Um, and, and even at the end, whenever he repeats the line where he's like, you know, open wide, say, ah, it's like, uh, you had to add that extra little bit in there. Yeah. Brian, why is Jaws too watchable? Why is it better than we're giving it credit? Watchable. For? Uh, this is what Ace Hamadazi. Uh, can you stop? Just stop. Um, I, I just like keep the subject about films, please. If you're in the comments and don't, don't get all political and, and oh, yeah. start telling people to f themselves because yeah. it's just since, it's not since, what we're here for. Since we're, you touched on it, guys, the, the the political shit. We don't care about what's going on in, in, in America, the world. We're talking about stupid movies, so just keep yeah. it that. Go yeah. find a political channel if yeah. that's what you're interested in. Yeah. Um, you're just gonna get booted. Uh, right. So this this is what I wanted to mention to CP because in your thirty one on thirty one CP, you you said that the film was. Well over two hours. See, shows how much I felt. It was wasn't it like one one fifty nine or something like that? It was close. Well, the, the cut I have is ninety minutes. Oh, what what cut do I have? No, the cut I have is Jaws <laughs> two. Yeah, he's got the Snyder yeah. cut. Oh wait, hold on, I'll find it. Hold on. I just picked I just picked it up on DVD from a charity shop, and it's ninety hours fifty six minutes according to uh to yeah Peter. yeah. What the right, heck? Maybe I'd probably have it higher on my list if it was only. All right, wait a minute. <laughs> Brian watched the wrong movie. We got to scrap all of our videos. Did <laughs> you watch Deep Blue Jaws? Did you watch Crew Jaws instead of Jaws? You just Steve? watched Critters again and then just faked that shit, didn't you? You yeah, got all the way through it. <laughs> Brian watched Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> this is an underrated sequel. Yeah, well, you're missing half the fucking movie. <laughs> Dude, there's an hour of just the, the, the spring break kids, and you're like, yeah, there's, oh, there's get that, it over with. They're on the spring break, and he's got the shittiest tugboat in the world coming to say, I'm coming, kids. <laughs> like Steamboat <laughs> Willie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, it, it's. it's it's look, it, like if you compare it to the original Jaws, of course, it's no way near, not even close. But just, it's. I, I thought it was all right. You know, if, if if we didn't know what Jaws was, and this was just a, a movie about a guy moving to a place who'd, who'd had a bad experience with sharks, I'd think oh, it's, it's all right. 
It's a pretty decent movie. It's not like it doesn't blow me away or anything. I've got no urge to watch it again, like any of the Jaws films other than the first one, but it was all right. It's just It's still on the bottom half of this list, and everything on the bottom half of this list is yeah. not a particularly great film. They're so. all kind of blend together. Yeah. All, all of them. <clears throat> Sean, why is Jaws 2 19? Um, so... <laughs> I guess there's several directions. Was I high on the list for this, or was I low? I, I, you and I Brian were, were were pretty high compared to me and CP, but okay. it's again we're, we're still in the bottom half, so okay. it's not. Yeah. Like- so so for me, it's a um, same thing as before. Just we watch shark movies in our house a lot, and so then this is the one. You know, it, tonally, it matches the first one the most. It feels the most like the first one, but that's also its biggest liability is mm. that if you're in the mood for this kind of Jaws movie, why wouldn't first, you just watch yeah. the first one for the 197th time? Mm, why would yeah. I go back to this one? Because it just repeats all the same plot points. It just takes all the Worst. best characters. <laughs> Brody himself is a boring character. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to be. That's the whole point. Mm. And the other two guys were the lively ones. And so when you remove the two lively ones, you remove the depth, you remove the intrigue, and you remove the entertainment, and you just kind of have like the same thing, but not quite as good. Yeah. But, like I said, I like shark movies, so it's pretty on my loose list compared to some other people. I, I would put on the the stupid of three over this one a little bit more. Or it has been played in my house more over the last ten years hmm. or two. Yeah, it's yeah. just... Like, the, the, the drama of it is the, the son brought the younger yeah. brother out with him on, on the spring break boating... Uh, extravaganza and that just isn't enough for me <laughs> like i was so bored i was i was literally clock watching halfway through i remember i checked three separate times and i'm like we're not even halfway through what is this it just and the realization that there was still two more coming too was starting to yeah. connect me where i was like yeah. oh my god yeah. okay okay Ooh. it it chews the clock like it could be in half that movie yes mm-hmm. This one's going to hurt me and Uncle Sean's show, uh, soul down to its core. Number 23, mm. Alien 3. Mm. Sean had it the lowest at 27. I I was, I think I wanted to smack myself for having it at 25. I Brian wanted to CP, smack myself for having it at 27. <laughs> yeah. Brian and CP, much more forgiving on it, 15 and 16. Um, mm. I'm going to let Sean kick this one off because... As much as we echo the same sentiments, so this this is his 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 <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, so I've I've widely stated that Alien Three is the movie I hate the most, hmm. but it's it that doesn't mean it's the worst movie ever made, and that doesn't mean there aren't redeeming qualities in it. And so I actually I watched the theatrical cut, and then the next day I watched the assembly cut, and then the next day I watched all the special features, and the story behind it I find it a lot more interesting than the movie itself. <laughs> Um, there is, uh, um, you know, David Fincher is a great director, so there is some talent on on screen. Um, but as a movie, when especially when you watch the special features, you realize they, they started shooting the movie without a completed script. <laughs> they stopped shooting without a completed script and then finished writing the script, went back and shot more stuff, and then reworked the whole thing in editing without David Fincher. That's interesting to me, but you can see it on screen, um, especially yeah. in the theatrical cut. There are some story fixes with the assembly cut, but it doesn't fix my ultimate issue. The reason I hate the movie isn't because of the production issues. It isn't because it's like, okay, once again, people are running through corridors. It isn't because they put Ripley on a planet with a bunch of violent, angry murderers and rapists and make them all wimps so they don't do anything. It's not none of that. It's the first 10 minutes. Um, Aliens is one of my favorite films of all time. And so much of that is because of the journey the new family created between... Ripley, Newt, uh, Hicks, and then they just undo it in the first 10 minutes. It's just taken away. And so all the victory, the satisfaction of the superior film is just taken away. And to me, that's maybe the most unforgivable audience betrayal in cinematic history. But reality-wise, I would rewatch this before I would rewatch the stuff lower on the list. <laughs> yeah, I echo pretty much the same thing. I didn't see Alien 3 for quite a few years. Uh, I didn't see it actually until the first Blu-ray set came out. Um, uh, Alien and Aliens were the ones that I always watched, as well as Alien Resurrection. We'll get to that one here shortly. Uh, Alien 3 was this weird one that I never had a copy of. Uh, My parents never had a copy of it. And when I first watched it, obviously when you watch 
Alien Resurrection, they give you an idea of where things went in the movie that I didn't see. But I watched Alien 3, and I was just kind of blown away. I was like, are you serious? You're really – that that was what you landed on to open this movie up. Um, and it's it's too hard for me to stomach. Uh, it's shot pretty well. There's some good things about it. There's, you know, there's some interesting characters here and there. Uh, stripping Ripley down to, you know, kind of a primal state for that movie and, and very grim to where they pretty much let you know at the beginning, like, yeah, she's going to die by the end of this one, one way or another. Uh, you know, there's, there's some appealing factors to that, I guess. I just don't enjoy this movie at all when I watch it. it it's, it's like, like Sean said, it's not, it's not 31 because there's worse movies below it, but uh, it is the movie on this list that, uh, along with Jeepers Creepers three, that I would probably have the biggest rant on if if I right. was to the two. Um, right. Brian, uh, I know you agree, but you're much more forgiving for that, um, and, and you find a lot more redeeming factors in it than we do. Alien three. Yeah, like <clears throat> totally agree with everything that Sean just said. I was you know, like right there, like back when I watched it uh, in I think I saw it in ninety. Five on video, um, I was I was just I, I, couldn't, I could not understand it. Could not understand how they how they could do that. Um, over the years, I've warmed up a bit okay. more to it, and I, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, modern TV and whatnot. You know, you look at something like Game of Thrones, where they'll kill a whole load of major characters in one episode, <laughs> like they were nothing. Yeah. And it's like in these days we call that good television, you know? and it's just. I think um, doing what they did in Alien 3, for me, um, it doesn't take away what happened in Aliens because that was still a journey that uh, Ripley had to go on. Um, and, yeah, yes, it's kind of been undercut because it feels like, oh, man, she went, all, 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 she went through all that for nothing. Um, but it was still a journey that her character had to go on, and that journey is valid. And you know, as with life, we go through hardships that you know things happen, and you think, what, what, what was that all about? That was, you know, I spent so much of my life on that, and, and now it's gone, it's over, it's done. That's just that's life. Um, I think uh, it, it doesn't make Aliens any less of a film for me. Uh, so I, I, I just I come on board it. I watch Alien Three, and I'm like. Okay, that's the hand we've been dealt. Much as people get dealt similar hands in life, you know, they lose children or whatever. The 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 the, the story arc there from that point on is, where do you go from here? And, mm -hmm. and the question the question is, with the prospect of Ripley now essentially losing her daughter, essentially losing this new family she's got. Does the film explore that in in a, in a reasonable way? Uh, do, you know, uh, and and for me, it it kind of does um, because Ripley is still true to her character, um, and I I feel like the, the the tone is a lot different from the previous movies, uh, which which I like. I like that with each each Alien movie, it's kind of had a diff had its own tone and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, and I think. You know, even, whatever you say about uh, what they do with Newt and Hicks at the beginning, with regards to the way it's made from a purely technical level, it beats the crap out of every other film we've mentioned so far. Um, on this I can list. agree with that. Like, for, with like that. purely from an objective level, pushing all subjectivity aside, this is a better movie than most of the films on, on, on this year's 31, just purely from an objective level. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, so I've warmed to it over the years. I'm not ha as harsh on it. W would I have preferred Newt and Hicks to, st to stay alive? Yeah, absolutely. Of course I would. Oh, that goes without saying, no? Yeah. Let absolutely. me ask you something before I go to CP. You're the one with the money. You have the decisions. Would you rather have the third closing chapter? Ridley Scott. Um, Prometheus, third film. Thanks. And Brian is now muted. No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, CP, you're a little more forgiving on it as well. You had it right up, right up there with Brian. I, so I have to admit, I, th I think this is something that we need to discuss in, in future 
future endeavors, um, I watched the assembly cut, which is probably a tad better than the theatrical. Yeah. I don't think uh, I've ever heard anybody say the opposite. So yeah, so I don't know what what cut of Jaws two Brian saw. So I mean, if we're watching different versions of movies, that that's something you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Um, so having said that, yes, the beginning sucks ass. It's 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 a terrible intro, but. Um, I feel like again we're we're still in the bottom half. <laughs> we're still in the bottom half, regardless. It 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 salvages something. It's an okay, okay time. I'm I'm not calling this. You know, it's not even in in the. I think, I think I have an Alien versus Predator movie higher than this. So it's not even like I'm defending it that much. It it's it's an okay time. The ending kind of was interesting. And then they they went in that direction. By um, any other horror franchise sequel standards, yeah, this is a really good film. You yeah. look at majority of horror franchises; they don't have the best track record for good movies. This just has the misfortune of coming off right. not one but two of the best films ever made. Yeah, this would be in the um, top half of Friday the Thirteenth. That's easy. Yes, yeah. easy. <laughs> It'd be, it'd be the top of Friday the 13th. All right. Period. I said it. You don't have to, you don't have to piggyback it. <laughs> Beating it out by a sliver was Alien Resurrection. Uh, I was the low max of this one. I had it at 13. Yes. Um, Brian had it at 26, the lowest. Sean and CP agreed that it was right there at 22. Um, the only defense right. that I have for this is some nostalgia. I actually grew up with this one. This was uh, one that dropped. I remember the VHS tape going to rent it, watching it. Um, it's not great, but I have more fun with it than it seems like a lot of other people do. Uh, I think it's the Joss Whedon-ish side of this movie. Uh, that's not the best translation of, of Joss Whedon's writing, but you know, having the gang with Winona Ryder and Ron Perlman in there. I, I kind of like the other side of, of Ripley that we get in this one. I think that they give enough explanation why she is a bit more sexual and, you know, not the the, the character that she was in the first three movies. Uh, I like that she's kind of a badass. Um, I think that there's some some cool some cool gore, some cool kills in there, although they do go, goof it up a little bit here and there. Um <laughs> When you get to the yeah. end, a humanmorph. A human, yeah. When you get to the end, yeah, 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 that 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 I can't defend that. That that <laughs> goes off the rails there at the very end. I could I could probably turn the movie off once it gets to that point and, and move on. But uh, I don't know. There's something weird about Alien Resurrection that I just enjoy. Uh, I, I will defend it to a certain extent. But anybody that watches it like now, if you just if you're new to the Alien franchise and you watch the first two, you get through the nut punch of Alien Three and then you get to Alien Resurrection, you're like, what the hell? I have absolutely no argument for you. Um, Brian, you had it the worst. Why is it 26? It's it's the it, uh, it's the film on the this year's 31 that has had the biggest diminish kind of returns when you go back and watch repeat viewings. When this first came out, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I, I saw it at the cinema opening night, huge aliens fan, always have been. Um and I loved this. I was just like, this is this is oh, this is awesome. I didn't even have a problem with the the alien human hybrid, to be honest. Back back when I saw it at the cinema, I know, right? Mm. Um, <laughs> and then it's just like, and then I watched it when it came out on Blu-ray, and I was like, oh, that that alien human hybrid is as bad as people were saying, isn't it? That is pretty shocking. But the rest of the film's good. The rest of the film's good. So, you know, it's fair enough. It just loses it in the last act. Watch it again, and it's like, I start noticing all these little things that suddenly I'm just like, tonally, that is not right for an alien film. Yeah. Like when that guy pulls the bit of brain out of the back of his head, I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> really? That's like something off a spoof. Of an alien film, it's and the it's most just, stacked cast too. So odd. Yeah, and it's just, and, and then that's just, I just like I say, little details with each viewing that just become more annoying. Like the amount of junk that they're dripping. Like it's just, there's literally that that scene where the alien hits the button with its with its mouth inside the mouth, and and it's just like when it comes out, it's, there's so much snot coming off that thing. That's actually that KY like, jelly for the record. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's just it like literally is. How are these aliens not dying of uh, 
dehydration. <laughs> Seriously, you're just slipping <laughs> about. <laughs> slipping. You know, when, when they jump on the walls like they do in Aliens, they just they'd hit the wall. And go, <laughs> they just they wouldn't get it. No, it was just it was ridiculous. It was just like it made no sense to me the look of these things compared to what we'd seen previously it was just, the whole thing was just a mess and like i say the more i watch it the more i see little bits like that that i just they just make me cringe and it's like to go from a film that when i first saw i loved to a film that is like oh man this is actually painful to watch that's why i think it's had the took the biggest hit so I'm, I'm kind of like you. Um, I, I saw it in the theater opening weekend as a huge fan of the franchise. I don't know if I fully loved it, but I would like, oh, man, they're shooting guns a lot. I mean, that was kind of my you know, takeaway. <laughs> and, you know, it moves quickly, and, you know, it's a chase movie on spaceships. So it had all the stuff that I liked, but it always, it always rubbed me kind of weird. And then it's one that as I kind of became an adult, I just didn't really rewatch, except when I was like, I'm going to watch through all of them. Yeah. And rewatching it, um, it's a, it's a weird movie, especially when you know about like Joss Whedon wrote the script, mm. and then a French guy that barely spoke English <laughs> filmed it. And you watch the movie, and you can see that where there's all mm. this like Joss Whedon like wink at the camera one liners that are delivered just deadpan, and like mm. she's shooting three pointers and stuff. Like, what am I watching right now? <laughs> like, what is this? Yeah. It, it's an odd, odd film. Like, it's not boring. I just can't say it's good. Um, and then it's also one that like there's two different hybrids in it that have <clears throat> boobs that like like, like of yeah. the things to include in the movie like that's actually like Sigourney Weaver with like tentacles and boobs and then the one at the end it's like okay that's that's very anatomically correct hybrid creature right there it's just like stuff that's just odd odd stuff in it and no one is likable everyone is just shouting and they're mean yeah. and they're backstabbers and so not boring but one that uh of just a odd very odd experience beginning to end cp yeah. alien resurrection can I just say, Junae is actually a good filmmaker. You know, he's, if you look at some of his other work, like Delicatessen and Amelie, Amelie is great. For, right, yeah. Uh, but, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, no, but I always his, forget his that, that he did clean. Amelie, because that one, yeah, I mean, we're yeah. about the same age. So, like, that's one of those ones that I was first getting into, like, deeper things beyond just movies where things explode and aliens eat people's <laughs> heads. Um, you know, that's one of those movies that came out and everyone was talking mm -hmm. about. And yeah. that, so I, I don't even, I, my brain doesn't even connect the two because. Mm -hmm. The movies are a little bit different. It's I always yeah, forget. Definitely. But yeah, absolutely. I just want to tell Brian that you should you should feel good knowing that I had to answer the door dressed in Pamela Voorhees drag <laughs> on <laughs> on November sixth. Like like that's the normal thing to do on Friday, November. It's November. October all year in this yeah. house, baby. <laughs> I'm like, hi, don't mind me. <laughs> so there. that reminds me uh, this is a short short story this reminds me of a time that me and my uh, my best friend from high school were driving to statesboro georgia it's about 45 minutes away from here uh at like one in the morning and we had just that day bought him he had a shaved head we bought him a captain jack sparrow wig because he was going to go to halloween as my dad my dad's got long biker hair and we were driving and we, he was going way too fast and he had the wig on and the cop pulled us over, you know, takes the license, everything like that. He doesn't even really know. He doesn't notice it. And then when the cops back there, he's like, oh, shit. And then throws the wig back. And then the guy comes back five minutes later to a shaved head. And <laughs> he laughed so hard that he let us go. <laughs> Just made me think of that story. Uh, 21. Speaking of laughing so hard. Gremlins to the new batch. I had it at 20. Brian had it the lowest at 27. CP and Sean pretty close, 17 and 16. Uh, this was the movie on this slate that I was the most anxious to rewatch because I have not seen this movie since I was like seven or eight. Uh, I've always been a fan of the first Gremlins, or the first, I almost said Critters, first Gremlins. Uh, and you know, it's higher. Yep. Uh, I'm confused sometimes. Uh, I was always a fan of the first one, and I remember seeing the second one. And I was just like, even as a kid, I'm like, that's not the same movie. This is weird. And I never watched it again. Uh, I bought the Blu-ray whenever we decided on on Gremlins replacing A Quiet Place because of, um, you know, everything. 
and then uh, I watched it right after I watched um, Critters 3. And I put it in, and I remember immediately thinking it was weird that Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck were introducing the movie. And I was like, that's weird that they left that in the Blu-ray. That should be like a special features thing or something. And no, that is the perfect intro to the movie that you were about to watch. Um, yeah, Looney Tunes cartoon, for real. Uh, it tries really hard to be goofy and slapsticky and... Uh, I didn't know the backstory to it that Sean had in his video. I'll let him take that part of it, but that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it, it, totally different film. And a lot of people in the horror community, I guess because of the creature effects with the spider and everything, seem to really like this one. Uh, I'm not one of them. It, it did not work for me. I didn't think it was funny. I think that it betrays the tone of the first film in ways that I don't want to see it. Um, yeah, not a fan. Uh, Sean, yes. that was the story of Gremlins 2. Yeah, so the director didn't want to make a sequel. Joe Dante did the first movie and wanted to go on and do other things. And the studio wanted to print money, so they really wanted him to do a sequel. And so he went off, did a couple other movies that didn't do as well as he'd hoped. So after several years, he finally went, okay, I'll do it, but I need complete creative control. And what he apparently was most interested in was sending up sequels rather than making a sequel to his movie <coughs> and so they let him go wild with this movie and that's why it is this strange thing that it is uh. that some people love for creature effects some people love because it is so bananas and that this actually got greenlit that they actually were allowed to make this bananas movie where Leonard Moulton holds up a copy of Gremlins and goes I don't like this movie and so then the Gremlins eat it like they go bananas, but at the same time, that means that they really went, went against what the first movie was. Yeah. It's a very odd companion piece to it. So yeah. I, I first saw it in the theater when it first came out, and I don't think I've rewatched it since. I remember being like, that was weird. Never yeah. watched, And I've rewatched Gremlins, of course, many, many, many times throughout the last 30 years. Gremlins 2, I'll never rewatched it. You know, it also makes ago. perfect sense while we've never gotten a Gremlins 3. <laughs> I think that came up like a remake or a, a long-awaited sequel, and I was like, yeah, that is weird. Why haven't we gotten that? Everybody loves Gremlins. Almost everybody. Uh, and, and then uh, you get to the second one, and it was like, oh, gotcha. <laughs> uh, Brian, you had a very low. Gremlins 2. I don't know what this film is. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it knows. Uh, it's just, it's no. uh, again, it's like in one sense, it's a bit like Jeepers Creepers, where you've got all the same people back to make it, and they make a film that seems to bear no resemblance to the original. Um, it, it's it, the tone is just mind-boggling. It's all over the place. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 Looney Tunes. It really is. It's Looney Tunes. Um, literally, <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just f for me as a Smallville fan, it was very interesting seeing uh, Lionel Luther playing <laughs> Lionel Luther, but as a weird kind of wacky parallel universe, good version of Lionel Luther. But beyond that, the film was it was just yeah, it was. It was too much. Um, I'll give it credit for doing the whole postmodernism stuff long before Scream came along, uh, even before Nightmare, you know, Wes Craven's new Nightmare came along. Uh, but beyond that, it's, uh, yeah, no thanks, not for me. Um, remind me to ask you guys what your your bottoms and tops were as far as expectations going in. Because this is the movie that I had much higher going into this um, endeavor. And coming out of it, I was like, oh, no. I Not only do I not like this movie, but I really want to punch 13-year-old me for thinking I like this movie. Because, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that, that, that takes a worse turn than Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 as far as tone is concerned. I made that comparison, too. And I was like, nope, sorry. I, 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 I'm on board for it for Texas Chainsaw. This, I was like. Yeah, it's just too, too, too much. I, it, yeah. it, it's just excessive. Um, I don't know. If it, if it were more it's contained... Exhausting. It's yeah. like there's no flow to it. It's just yeah. bit, bit, yeah. bit, bit, yeah. bit. Yeah, it feels like an SNL 
thing that just was 90 minutes way too long. Yep. Coming in at 20, my favorite film ever. <laughs> Critters 2. I had it the highest. At 14. Brian, so tell us, far... tell us why you're such a Critters <laughs> fan. Man. I will. Brian had it not too low, far below me at 17. CP and Sean down still towards the bottom at 23 and 25. Um, this is interesting because Critters and Critters 2, I get the fandom with those two. Like I, the, the first one, we'll get to it, but the, that whole isolation, you know, that that very 80s vibe that it goes for, I, I get it. And then two kind of, and I made the same joke in 31 on 31, not to compare quality, it kind of takes the Terminator 2 route where it's like, let's just go bigger. Let's just go badder. We'll have a bunch of Critters. We'll have more Carnage. We'll have, you know, random nudity that's pretty hilarious. Uh -huh. and, and we'll have a giant Critters ball that just skins somebody like a Predator in a second. Mm -hmm. And I think all of the excess of this movie was kind of entertaining to me, where I was I was still on board. I was like, okay, Brian, all right, the first one's pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> like I, Brian I, made them. And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then and then Critters Two, I watched it. And I was like, okay, I'm still, no, I'm still not bad, not bad. Okay. And then uh, I think I just really like the the bounty hunters as well. They they bring Charlie back. He's still kind of like the the bitch of the three. They just make him do all the stupid stuff. And then you can breathe the guy, in space, by the way. You got the guy that just wants to mimic everything. So he sees the centerfold model and the little bit with the staple was cute. And then whenever mm -hmm. he's getting ready to mimic Freddy Krueger and he turns around, he's like, "No, not that one!" Like I kind of laughed. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Critters too. It, it's lowbrow. It's definitely B movie, but it's got enough of that the good 80s cheese to it that I, I, I mildly enjoyed Critters too. So I had it at 14. Sue me. Here, I'll do it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, you had it the lowest. Yeah, I mean, you kind of sold me on it. Maybe I like it a little bit more than I thought. So I, part, I think part of my problem is, is I did, I binged the series. What we talked about before, I did yeah. the thing that kind of probably gives you the worst way to experience yeah after Curtis attack and you're like nope yes i just experienced too many of them too quickly so um you know i i went back like it's tough at this part of the rankings that are this size you have mm -hmm. very different types of movies that you're comparing so in my ranking right around here i have prometheus where you're comparing a very high budget, high brow film that it seriously disappoints me to, uh, a, you know, a, a pretty low budget creature feature about a ball of critters rolling around and rolling over people, you know, and then you know a a, a transforming bounty hunter from another planet picks up a playboy and grows boobs, you know, next to Prometheus. These are, you know, um, they're they're tough to compare. So. Um, I, you know, there's like a – the degree to which a placement could shift depending on the day uh, at this range in here is, is pretty pretty heavy. So I, I don't have much to say. Like it's mm – -hmm. I, I'm not – I don't love this franchise. Um, this one's the one that I've seen the most. Uh, the definitive memory is the transformation sequence because I saw that when I was like 13 or whatever. So, cool. <laughs> this is the best movie ever. Paul? That's the reason why he watched it the most. This that one. This is that one. <laughs> Rewind. So, you know, I, I, I literally don't have much to say that, um, you know, as like when I saw this and saw that I had it at 25, I was like, oh, maybe I should have had that a couple spots higher. But then I was like, Ahead of Prometheus, should I do that? There's a lot of tricky stuff when you're placing stuff and ranking mm. things that are so different that you have such different experiences with, too. Yeah. yeah. CP, your experience wasn't good. It was at 23. Yeah. You know, I was in and out. I, I Like, I spent half the movie thinking, is this the same location as Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead? I'm almost certain that this is the same area as <laughs> Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. <laughs> Just watch the whole movie like... Yeah, yeah, I'm like, wait, no, I think that's the same house. And then the ball happens, and I'm like, no, I'm done. I'm done. They turned into a ball and swallowed up some dude. So, um, no nope. Cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the bait that they left for them, and they, they rolled to the... What what was it? They they the left bowling, a bunch of cheeseburgers. The yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheeseburgers at the barn or whatever, right? Yeah. And then they they, they went in the other direction. Yeah. No bones. 
What's your problem with that? What's, yeah. I'm, 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 you, you, you're talking like there's an issue there, but I'm waiting for you to, to tell me what the issue is. That's, yeah, yeah they, 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 they were eating couches when we first saw them, and now, now they're... So they, they're eat, they eat anything. That's the point. <laughs> so so why, why do burgers? Because burgers are tastier than couches. Let's face it. <laughs> and actually they started the first thing they ate when they got there in the first one was cows it was the cattle they took first uh, oh. <laughs> yeah just for a bit of continuity there. yeah it was it was a car seat then it was a couch and then it was like a a, a, a rocking chair i was like what's with the chairs enough with the chairs but that was part one yeah part two i, I was i was I, I was in i knew i was in for a bad time but you know the tits broke it up. But I won't argue that. that, that <laughs> <laughs> Brian Critters Two. It's just a fun ride. It's it's look. It came out in the eighties. It's absolute cheese. The first Critters film was uh, Gremlins rip off. That for my money just so happened to be better than Gremlins. Um, I, I, I was I was all for it. I wanted to see a sequel. Uh, I loved the little fur balls. As long as the car's in trouble, that's great. Uh, and the second one does what the next two sequels don't do, which is actually give us critters. It's not as it's not as good as the first one uh, because it it, 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 ha, it suffers from that sequelitis problem where they stuff far too many characters in because you need. I know, see it, because you need that, that 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 essence of you know just having more and more victims, more and more carnage. So let's stuff it with a bunch of people who actually don't really matter. Whereas the first one, it's a lot more confined, it's a lot more scaled down. The characters in there kind of you know they actually matter because it's it's just a family unit. Um, so so that's why this one isn't quite as good. It it does feel like a, a lot of the people there are just cannon fodder, but they're cannon fodder in quite fun entertaining ways which for me is all you want from an 80s kind of horror film so yeah it's entertaining it's not great uh it's not you know it's not a classic but it, it's as a as a huge fan of that first film it was like yeah i can take that give us a few more sequels like that i'll be happy josh williams um comment below which of us do you want nudes from Oh, no. uh, that is a hell of a super chat, my friend. Thank you so much. I'm uh, glad you enjoy the content, and I can't express enough how much uh, donations like that help to keep the lights on quite literally around here. So thank you so much. Um, yes, agree with everything that you just said, Brian. Um, 19. Now, this is the other movie that I was really looking forward to rewatching this time because of my terrible first experience with it. It Chapter 2. Oh, I, had the it, <laughs> I had it at 21. Brian had it just below me at 22. CP slightly more forgiving at eight. Sean quite a bit higher up there at number 12. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, this is the movie for me that I was like, okay. I'm a believer in the second watch to an extent. And I was hoping. I was like, okay, maybe this is one of those movies that I walked in with the wrong expectations. Now that I know what I'm in for, uh, I'll watch it at home for the first time since theaters, and maybe it will be better. It was worse. Mm. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of the 1990 movie. We'll see that higher uh, on this list. It was much higher for me. Uh, I was a big fan of the It Chapter 1. Uh, I thought that they pretty much did everything with the exception of CGI right. And I was like, okay, they seem to be on a good path here. We've had decades to learn our lessons from both the novel and the miniseries. So let's please not just say, you know, King wrote it. We can't change it at all to make it different or better on the screen. Let's just, and that's exactly what they did. They, they said, okay, we're going to give Pennywise the, the origins that was written for him, which quite honestly on screen is stupid. They have the whole ritual of Chud thing, and the you know we're gonna we're gonna take this, and you're gonna like you're gonna psychically know all the stuff that I know. Um, then you, the movie does this wash, rinse, repeat thing twice, where they start it twice. Mike's everybody twice? <laughs> six times, seven. Well, no, times. I mean like it, like this whole wash, rinse, repeat cycle of of all the characters yeah, yeah, yeah. twice. So you got Act One where Mike's calling everybody. You get a little context of where they are in their adulthood. They go, wait, Derry? Huh? And they have a little flashback. Okay, I'll come back. And then they go to the next character. They do that six or seven times. You get to act two, and he's like, okay, this is Derry. You've all forgotten who you are. You forgot about that summer, and plus, everybody loves the kids, so we got to have footage of them. Uh, go explore Derry. 
They go explore dairy, and again, wash, rinse, repeat. One character goes to the library, has a little memory of when they were a kid that summer. They see Pennywise. They jolt out of their little, you know, dream, and then Pennywise shows up again. They scamper away with a little the the Inception totem that they choose, and then they do it six or seven more times, and then you're like, okay. It's so long and bloated and dragging that you're like, please, God, tell me you have a kick-ass third act for me. Mm. So we're doing the spider again. We're just going to put the clown face on it. And and they defeat him by calling him a clown and turning him into a puddle. Yeah. Oh, my God. I <laughs> hated it. Like In hindsight, I might have dropped this review to my worst, uh, my worst uh, title for my, my, my rankings at the end. Uh, it just it, it frustrates the living hell out of me that you have this level of budget coming off of the most financially successful horror film of all time. You have decades to learn lessons and you learned absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, I, I, I practically hate this movie. I don't think I'll ever watch it again. So, um, Brian, you had it pretty low, too. Yeah, for all the reasons you just said, it's a it's you had a blank checkbook with this uh, the, the what horror movie gets a blank checkbook it's just yeah. it, it just doesn't happen like horror movies are, are the one franchise the one genre where Absolutely. it's like yeah they they try to make them on the cheap if you can make them on the cheap get them out and get just you know you can you can do pretty good business for what with a normal franchise is is usually poor business and why is that it's because you make them cheap. Uh, this got a blank checkbook, essentially, and they just... It's, just, it's so full of CGI. It's its so bloated. Just, really, two and a half hours for this? No, it's three, isn't it? Is it three hours? Yeah, it's 2.50. Three. It's 2.50. Two, two hours, 50 minutes. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, th yeah, that's, that's not... If you can tell no. all of the story of the first film in under two hours, no excuse yeah. for bloating the second half, which even yeah. people who love the novel mm -hmm. agree is the weaker half of the story. Mm. Yeah. And adding the kids back in does not help because the CGI they had to use to de-age them is terrible. It just makes us think how much more we like the other movie. Yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. all over the place. It's all over yeah. the place. And as much as I think Bill Hader's performance is really good in the movie, and I'd like to see him do more horror the thing that we didn't even talk about is just the weirdly terribly placed humor in this movie where it's like mm -hmm. in the most awkward spots, like the yeah. one where the guy is like yelling at the leper and it starts vomiting on him and they played the song from Deadpool. And it's like, <laughs> that makes no sense as an editing choice. Yeah. And it's, ugh, CP. Uh, so I, you guys left so much for me to cover. Um, yeah, what they said. The, the <laughs> one thing that I'll talk about that I kind of enjoyed and wish they, you know, it was something different. It was it was a taste of something different that we could have gone in a different direction with. When there was the girl under the 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 seats at the carnival or whatever, yeah. the girl had the mark on her face and and, and mm -hmm. she got eaten up. It would have been nice to see like a new batch of of kids that that are dealing with this dose of Pennywise. But no, just just that one, and we're going to talk about the other ones for two hours 50 as, as it seems so um I'll, it does share the same ending as jason takes manhattan so there's that oh, reduced God. to a little yeah, little thing yeah. in a puddle jesus <laughs> sean you okay you need to go wash your eyes out or anything i don't know what to do uh it's are you allergic allergy. to these shit movies <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird texas my thing eyes. that's happened to me over the last four years where like i'll just randomly my eyes will just burn for 30 minutes <laughs> so uh if i'm crying it's it's both because the the comment section called me the oddball in the group said i'm quiet <laughs> and, and because of the set of movies and probably also because of whatever's in the air in the state of Texas. Yeah, did I have I had this one the highest right? Um, oh. yes, you had it at twelve. Yeah, so that creates the scenario where I have to defend it. Um, <laughs> essentially, I, I would play the the uh, Brian's Alien Three argument of um, I all the things you guys said, all the issues you had. I'd go, yeah, I have all those problems too with it. This is such a huge step back from the first one. But it's also a, a professional production. There's a bunch, like, the cast on it, it, I think they did a great job of casting actors, whether they're the A-listers or the old Spice guy. 
that, so that they actually look like the kids from the first one. Individual scenes, I think, worked pretty well. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a cyclical film where you literally spend the middle hour and 15 minutes of it doing the exact same thing just so we can have memories, bring the, the kids back. And then Pennywise shows up and then we get to the finale and it's like, just kidding. Mike was screwing with you guys. It doesn't work after all. All you have to do is make fun of him. As long as you make fun of him, then you'd be like, I mean, I agree with all that stuff. It's just a movie that um, maybe it's just the slickness of the production makes it more watchable for me. And I didn't grow up watching the the miniseries. I haven't read the book, so I'm not as invested in it to feel some of the, I, I don't know what you call it, betrayal or whatever of the crappiness of some of this one. But I would agree with every all your criticisms. I just enjoyed more things about it. Hey, we got we got a Joshua Nelson loved it. Chapter two, in spite of its flaws, it does have some fans. It does. Have yeah, some- it does. It, it is kind of. Yeah, I have nothing else to add to that. <laughs> yeah, it is. It does. <laughs> uh, Jeepers Creepers two came in at eighteen. Uh, I had it at seventeen. Sean had it the highest at fourteen. Brian and CP almost tied with twenty and twenty one. Uh, I actually have fond memories of seeing this movie at the drive-in. I saw it as a double bill with Freddy vs. Jason, which is pretty awesome. Um, and this is the type of movie that I think works really well for drive-ins, uh, even the first one. It has that old-school monster movie drive-in feel. So I like this movie a lot more when it first came out. I thought the trailer was incredible, which basically is the opening of the film, and the opening is pretty awesome. You know, the, the iconic shot of him on the scarecrow and taking that kid. Uh, that stuff is awesome. That is on par with the first one as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and I even really like the the isolation of the bus and the fact that they can go anywhere, but if they leave the bus, he's going to get them. So it's the, this wide open. It's kind of like being on the ocean. You and it, you know, it's just you have escape everywhere, but you can't go. Um, I like that whole vibe about it. I like that you know they kind of up the ante a little bit, show a little bit more of the creeper. It's not a movie building to a reveal. You know from the beginning that he's a monster. They show all the little tools and you know all the little things that he's made. I like all of that stuff. The characters is where this movie gets drugged down for me. Um, there's not really a likable character in sight. Uh, you have a lot of random just high school caricatures. you got random cheerleader who somehow has this clairvoyant ability to, to tie with Justin Long and, and know that something's up. Um, you've got the douchebag um, jock guy who's just like over douchebagging it. Uh, you've got the one dude who's always the weirdest part of this movie where they, they all make fun of him like he's closeted. Is he? Uh, because, uh, yeah, is he? <laughs> they have that whole joke with his name because he got he got scars on his face or something like that. And then it, the big twist at the end, oh, I was actually trying to steal a dude's car. That's what the whole origin, it's like, what? And it, it's just, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's a very entertaining movie that just character-wise drops the ball a lot from the first movie for me. Um, I'll go around the horn the opposite way, CP. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, 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 this movie is so strong that that's why, uh, again, unfairly. So perhaps I, I have the third one just so, so low because this, this is a a rather decent second film of a, of a franchise. Um, there are moments that, that, you know, when you know the, the outside spectrum of, of things and how the film was made, you kind of, scratch your head but I, I have always argued and and battled for uh equal rights when it comes to objectifying people and if you want the male gaze on the male body this is your movie lots of topless boys run amok absolutely uh <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of topless boys, Uncle Sean. <laughs> yeah, There's so inside one... context of that that nobody knows, and it makes me sound like a horrible person. But... <laughs> I've gotten at least no less than two phone calls from Sean accidentally where he was shirtless, and he's like, "Oh, huh? what's going on?" <laughs> yeah, we've had a group group chat going back four years now on Facebook and the number of times I've just like picked up my computer while shirtless and called the group chat and they're like, Whoa, look, Sean's in his underwear again. Uh, Whoops. So uh, Jeepers Creepers. I, I, uh, as I mentioned before, I don't have, I'm not terribly invested in this franchise. This is another one. I saw it, I think right when it came out on video, 
It's like, cool, whatever. Enjoyable enough. Haven't rewatched it since. And for me, uh, nothing really changed in my opinion that it was like, okay, cool, passable enough horror film. Compared to the first one, I thought this one was actually more focused. The The first one, it felt a little bit like the director had a bunch of different things. So it, it never connected with me as well as it did with some of you. And um, so I watched this one. I thought I, I appreciated that it was a little bit more locked in on one plot, yeah. one, one main plot with the father, son as the sub or father out for revenge as a subplot. I, I'm an action movie guy. So the idea of someone like Ray Weiss as this angry dad that all he really cares about is getting revenge, using a post hole digger, designed his own mega weapon. That's my kind of thing. I agree with, I believe some of you mentioned the characters here aren't, they're not likable at all. Um, they're not Justin Long type, just kind of fun, enjoyable characters. But I think Ray Weiss carries some of the vibe of who am I actually rooting for? And then it's fun to watch these jerk high schoolers getting their heads eaten off and stuff like that. Mm. So, you know, a middle of the road kind of um, creature feature for me that's enjoyable enough to watch, but not one that I would necessarily go back to. Mm. Brian, you touched on it a little bit, uh, but uh, any further thoughts on Jeepers Creepers 2? No, it's 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 a good film. It, again, it feels like it's it can't, it can't, it's not quite as good as the first one. It's it's. I, I was a bit disappointed when I felt, saw it at the cinema. If I'm perfectly honest, it's one. Of, it's it's a film that's actually got better with me, for me on the smaller screen. Because mm-hmm. uh, when I saw that first film at, at the cinema, I was like, "Wow, that's like." That's that's like a new horror icon. Just you know, it, it, if you kick out it's a few more sequels, as good as that. Yeah, it's just like if 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 this franchise did not come with the reputation of, of Victor Salva, people would be lauding the Creeper as 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 you know as as a modern day horror icon. People kind of do anyway, though, too. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. But it's just like you're not allowed, you know, you're not allowed yeah. to because of the association to Salva. And it's just like um, sec- the second film, it, it's 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 as solid as a kind of slasher horror type movie can be, I suppose. Um, it don't blow me away. It's it, it's more that there are moments in it where it's like that's an awesome moment. But the film mm-hmm. as a whole is like, all right, whatever. Let's let's see where the creeper goes next. Hopefully, we'll get something that lives up to the first film. <laughs> yeah, we're officially there, guys. The the shoulder shrug. Uh, <laughs> this portion, we do this for eight films. <laughs> Speaking of that, yeah. Uh, so this one, this is where I got to beat the defender now. Uh, number seventeen, we've got it. Nineteen ninety. Now this, one hundred percent, is nostalgia for me. Uh, I have it at nine. Brian had it at 16, and CP and Sean had it the lowest at 21 and 20. I have a lot of personal ties to the It 1990 movie and the Tim Curry performance of Pennywise. Uh, this, along with Zelda in the original Pet Cemetery, are the mm-hmm. only two horror characters that ever followed me into my nightmares. Um, I remember oh, having, I, yeah, I, I was, I've said it before. Like I grew up as a horror fan. I, I was introduced to horror very young. Uh, for for modern standards, and even then, like watching Child's Play three, I was like, "Cool!" I was never scared. I watched Nightmare on Elm Street. Cool! I was never scared. It was just it was entertainment for me. Uh, Pennywise with Tim Curry was the first time where I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Turn the lights on, please. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's probably hilarious to say that now if you're somebody that just now watched it or watched it, you know, within the past five or six years because it is dated. It hasn't aged perfectly well. Uh, and unfortunately for Tim Curry, his performance probably isn't as appreciative, appreciable, if that's even a word, um, <laughs> as the Bill Skarsgård version, because that's much more modern, much more you know modern horror flair to it. But just something about him just having his voice and his physicality to bring that character to life. There's just something I'll always appreciate more about it. Um, he he. He's one of my favorite horror characters of all time. I love the first half of this. The first half I can watch all day long, day and night. doesn't matter. I love the kids. I, I actually prefer some of the kids in the 1990 miniseries to the casting of the movie. And I love the kids in the movie. Um, and unfortunately, something I never thought I would say ever, 
uh, after we've seen Hit Chapter 2, seen it twice now, I actually prefer the second half of this to that. And my God, it's yeah, exactly. That, that, that's the proper that's the proper reaction to the mm-hmm. second half of this movie, because despite having a great cast for the most part, uh, with the exception of the Bill H- Hader character, um, I think that that guy is terrible in the it, it 1990 movie. But, uh, you know, ha- having um, John Ritter and everything in there, I, I actually prefer the cast. Uh, I, I think they do better balancing all the different storylines of that second half. You get to the end with the spider it's terrible. It's garbage. But again, that's a TV budget in 1990. What's their excuse in you know 2019? Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it's all nostalgia for me. If I was going objectively, I'd probably be along the lines with the other three. But nostalgia is a powerful thing, and, and I have it pretty high. Um, CP, we'll go around the horn that way. Tim again. Curry is a, a brilliant actor. His performance deserves all the credit it gets. Other than that, this movie is a made-for-TV schlock fest from 1990 that is way too long. Um, this movie is 10, 10 spots higher than 31 because Tim Curry busts his ass for three hours during this made-for-TV nonsense. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> that's, that's all. That is all from... From here, thank you, Brian. You had it up a little bit higher, uh, coming closer to me. Um, what is good? What's for- forgivable about it? Nineteen ninety. Well, the thing for me is that, like, I mean, this genuinely scared me when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, so I, I can't, I can't gloss over that. Uh, it doesn't scare me at all now. Like, you yeah. know, I watch it now, and it's just, there's, there's no real horror value to it. But it is still a good character piece. It is still a good story. You know, it's, you can pull your face all you want, CP, but there's, there's a reason the story has, you know, there's, there's far more story and character development in this you, than there is in any kind of Friday the 13th movie. You're just going that well, aren't you? just keep going that well. You know, it, it, that's what movies are actually about, you know, character and story. Without them, you don't really have a right lot. Did so, did, did, it is a good story. You know, I can see, you know, I, I've never read a Stephen King book. I just, I, I don't read books. So I don't see the point when you can watch the movie. But uh, I, I, I just don't like. know how to read. But, <laughs> 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 but it's like, you know, there's a reason there are fans of Stephen King. And clearly he's he's come up with a good story here. There is something in it. Uh, you know, it's, they, they've, they've, they bungled it both times with the cinematic versions, but this was a made-for-TV movie. You know, we we can't hold it up to the same expectations as as something that would go in cinemas. And yet, you know, it did have such such a strong impact when it came out that you know it it, it got quite a lot of buzz. And I think personally, that's because of the story. It's because of the strength of those characters, um, and 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 the sense of what may happen, what might happen. Uh, even though actually now, when you watch it, from a horror standpoint, not that much. Happens. The story at its heart is timeless. That's why they're able to mm. swap decades in the movies and everything still works perfectly fine. CB. Cody, can you remind me where Brian ranked Critter's Attack, please? Do you know? Do, do you have that number in front of you somewhere? The made-for-TV film? Yeah, 30th. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. That's all. Made-for-TV film. Gotcha. Yeah, well, thanks. What was my comments? Yeah, well, I don't, what I don't get what you're related to. Them. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> Sean, I, I don't separate. No, them. no, 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 no! Come on, explain yourself because you're talking crap. I'm you're talking, talking absolute crap. crap. No. So what? So I. CP's first argument. of all. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's CP's argument. <laughs> <laughs> when when you can explain that a bit better, CP, then then feel free. We're we're at an hour forty eight with with because best. Brian, oh, because, what a good get out! What a good get out clause. I'm oh, sorry, time. Because Brian has such personal ties to the first critter. As critter's attack is much more of an offensive movie to him. I I, 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 I get it. And because they have, so if you want to apply the argument I made to critter's attack, let's take it, which was a made for TV movie, and Four go to. 
what they did with the new it version where they put loads of money in it they got the best actors they they really put the quality in there they really put the love in there it was it was clearly evident that the people involved loved the story had respect for the story that is not evident with the crap that we got with critters attack and that was my argument so i don't know what you're banging on about mate uh, i'm I'm so far gone, I forgot at this point. I, I just, <laughs> I, just rem I remember hearing stuff about the, 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 the TV, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Good 10 second calm over here. Hi, I'll tell them. Yeah, yeah, Sean, Sean, please. Oh, yeah, Sean. yeah, yeah. Hey, so I didn't watch this until last year. Um, I was aware of its existence back in the 90s, but I, I'd never seen it uh, until last year. So when I watched, or yeah, it was last year I watched it for the first time. So whenever I watched it, I just saw them taking this epic Stephen King story and squishing it into a three hour runtime. I saw them trying to pull off these horrifying effects on a TV show budget <laughs> from 30 years ago. <laughs> and then I saw them, you know, uh, trying to do horrifying child murder without offending the censors on mm. network television. And so for me, there's things I could respect, especially Tim Curry. Some of the other actors do do a pretty decent job. There's moments that I appreciate it, but for the most part, I, I saw its limitations more so. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. That original. This is the type of movie that. Too. Yeah, this is the type of movie that I would I absolutely say that nostalgia is damn near required. Um, yeah. And I was saying, like I was I was watching it. Um, and my kids walked in and they're six and eight and they ended up sitting down and watching most of it with me. They weren't scared. They weren't like, I mean, it was like, the, it, like it felt like, it like felt like watching goosebumps with them or something like that. That was one of my favorite. Like, I don't know if we're just getting so desensitized to just like horrifying stuff that like my kids that don't watch a lot of horror, are like, Oh, the clown that eats kids. Like, oh, fun. let's sit down. This is a popcorn. But, um, and then I told I, you, know, you not to show human centipede to them. I told you it was going to ruin every other movie before it. <laughs> but you know i went to try me, to show the trailer for the new ones and they couldn't you know watch a minute of that so yeah. you know, some of that's uh, aesthetic some of that's just the intensity yeah. but that's what it is mm -hmm. the, the I, scene for me that I, that always stuck with me when i was a kid was when the, the the kid gets sucked into the pipe and he's kind of bent he bends over and then he gets pulled into the pipe as a kid that was just it was horrific because you didn't know where he was being taken to. And it was just, it was just this, yeah, where's he going? You know? And it's just like, and then I watched it this time around because this was the first time I'd seen it since watching it as a kid. And I was just like, Oh, <laughs> vivid, vi really vivid memories of that as a child. And then I watch it now and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number 16, we've got no. The Predator. No. <clears throat> My most what? disappointing movie that year. Uh, I had it at the lowest at 22. Uh, everybody else was much more forgiving. Sean, not too much higher at 17. I know we echo a lot of thoughts. Uh, CP and, and Brian, I know. Brian's actually a pretty big fan of this movie, so I'm going to let him start. Brian, what? The Predator. <laughs> 14 stronger than 12. <laughs> Brian argues his case. Yes, much, yes. No, much, no, no. Go ahead. Stronger for no, this you're, you, you're, you're right. Go ahead. Just, just please do the talking. I think you were still on the shoulder shrug here. Yeah, yeah. 12. Brian was like, hell no, this is underrated. It just... <laughs> I, I think I think it is underrated, to be honest. Uh, it's just the way people talk about it, it like it's a yeah. absolute mess. Like it's just been pieced together, but you know it was abandoned and pieced together by the studio. And that's what it, you expect to get when you watch it. It's not. It's got a the coherent act, story. Yeah. The third act's a bit sloppy. A particular character gets killed that you don't even notice. Literally blink and you miss it. And you're like... <laughs> Wait, where did that guy go? And you're like, who was yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. And it's like that that to me was my main thing that I walked away from thinking that's the negative. That's the one that drags it down a bit. But everything else, that the, the the only other negative I would say is that okay, maybe a lot of the jokes don't work the way I would hope they would for a Shane Black film. But by any other standard, this is a pretty solid sequel in a in a franchise that come on let's face it has only really got one classic in it which is that first predator film if you're expecting something as good as that first predator film from here on out you may be deluding yourself <laughs> but uh you know it's just not that kind of franchise um so so 
I, yeah, I don't see what everyone's problem is, to be honest. There's a few things in it. If you clear it up, this is a, this is a really good, solid film. It's got a good story in there. Um, it's, it's pretty solid. It's got a group of characters that are actually quite entertaining to watch together. But that's what people um, complain about is the tone's too, too jokey. <laughs> and I, I, I know, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's, yeah. I'm fine with it. They establish it from yeah. the start that they're a little, they're a little off. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a good reason for it. It's not like you know, it's not like pulling a bit of brain out from the back of your head in a film <laughs> that otherwise is really dark and serious. It's uh, at least the tone in the film is consistent from start to finish, mm. and there's a good reason these th this bunch of people would have that kind of sarcasm and that kind of you know vibe about them so it's it's not unwarranted um yeah i i don't get the criticisms it's not best film of the year material but as a predator movie it gave me what i wanted a, a group of people who are pretty well uh trained going up against predators that kill everything inside and it's just i enjoyed it it was good fun start to finish um CP, anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I'll just piggyback what Brian said. No, he he said everything. I, I mean, it's 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 Shane Black humor. It's I mean, that's kind of what I wanted. It, like, it, I would have actually been upset if we didn't have that type of humor uh, sprinkled throughout the movie. So, uh, I don't know what people are expecting, knowing that Shane Black was behind this. If you watch Iron Man three, if you watch the Nice Guys, <laughs> you're getting you know that tone. That that tone is there in this movie. Granted, the third act. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not quite as strong because right, I think right. Shane Black works best when he has two characters that really bounce off each other, sure. and they're the crux of the movie. Where here he's dealing with a whole group, so as a result of that, it, it, he's he's kind of sacrificing some character elements that sure. actually would put all into one character and he's spreading them out among, uh, amongst, amongst a group of them so some of the characters feel like they're a bit kind of I hate to use that word forced because what does it actually mean but it's like it's like he's trying to force some element of humor through a, a, a particular dynamic that that wouldn't really exist whereas when he's doing something like nice guys you can make one character really kind of eccentric and whatnot yeah. um, and, and it be more believable uh, here it suffers a little bit because he's dealing with a group of characters rather than two. But beyond that, it's. I mean, I think you're away, being. Dog. I mean, I think there's plenty of entertainment value here because it does have Shane Black humor. Mm. It does, of course, have plenty of predator action and a really lively cast. Mm. But the story, the story <laughs> is just. Those dogs there's, are abysmal, yeah. There's problems <laughs> all throughout this thing. And they keep introducing plot lines that don't go anywhere. Things happen that, like, there's this rogue predator that shows up to help mankind, but the first thing he does, in every opportunity he has, he starts skinning people alive. Like, he just like he just can't stop. Like, that's his addiction, is skinning people. Like, there's, like, and that's just one of many things you could point out. That's just the beginning, the opening scene. They make you think, oh, it's a normal predator. And you go, oh, no, he's here to help us. How did he communicate? How did he say hello? He skinned some people You're alive. You're just misunderstanding. Yeah. He's just, <laughs> and, and then when he wakes up in a lab with people that he's supposedly trying to help and giving them a secret weapon to save us, he starts punching holes in their guts. Well, like, there's just a lot of... I don't know. If, wait, wait, the one that they got in the lab, he wasn't trying to help so much as he was trying to run away from... He was just trying to get their... But he's bringing the, the weapon thing. He's bringing the weapon that they, that's supposed to be the whole point of the movie is to get this weapon to us, to save us, and it's not revealed into the last scene. And maybe I'm wrong. I've seen the movie three times, I don't, I don't but think that it's would be to my save point. Us. I thought it was to, to defeat the Predators, not so much save us. Maybe Cody, that was in, yeah, Cody, which maybe, is it? Brian, maybe which that was it? in. I think it all led to the ending that got cut oh, with yeah. other predators. <laughs> yeah, it's. Look, I mean, this, this this movie. I'm a Shane Black fanatic. Okay, I, I might as well have a Shane Black tattoo. I love the dude. Ooh. I love his writing. I love. I was so excited about this movie because of his name. I was like, oh my god, that is perfect. That's the perfect tone. He was in the first movie. He's not going to let them screw this up. I watched it. It felt like somebody trying to make a Shane Black movie. It didn't feel like Shane Black. Like even the humor. Like I didn't have a problem with the tone, but even the the the, the jokes that are in here never made me laugh. I mean, when you've got Thomas Jane doing the 
most overused j- gag about, yeah. oh, this guy's got Tourette's, so every once in a while he's going to spout off some some nonsense and some cuss words in a weird way. It was just, it, it was low brow. It was way below what I would expect from Shane Black. Uh, it, like Sean said, the story's all over the place. There's a really wild story about how many things got cut and re-shot, and you get this little hodgepodge whatever. Um, I have no idea if that's Shane Black's fault, if, if even his version of the movie would be just as disappointing to me or not. I'll probably never know. Uh, then you insert giant predator that is all CG and where things go in the third act. And especially that last little tag at the end when they're like, you know, there's this, this weapon and, and they were opening it. And I remember specifically me and Sean were doing a spoiler chat and I asked him, I was like, what did you think was inside of that thing? And he's like, I thought it was the T 800. And I was like, oh, me too. And it was like the weirdest thing where like that scene came on and the music was playing. And like my heart started pumping. I was like, are they really about to do this? Are we about to get Arnold? But it's not Dutch. It's going to be like, for some reason, I had that in my head. Yeah. And I was like, if that happens, I will forgive all the rest of this movie. No, it's the <laughs> Iron Man suit. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then the, the, the one-liner that they keep giving, they keep giving the main character all these one-liners that just don't land. Where he's like, oh, I hope this suit comes in a 44 long. I'm like, please roll credits so I can go home and bitch about this in front of a camera. It, it, it's, yeah. it, it doesn't work for me at and all. I think really the thing doesn't. that has to be said is that they did a test screening. And apparently people didn't like the third act. And so then the whole second half of the movie was reshot and reworked. It was supposed to take place over the span of a week. There's footage in the trailer of them riding on a tank. There's set photos of them teaming up with two more rogue predators to battle the hybrid predators. And they took all this out. Edward James almost was, was a character who was heavily prominent. Almost. He was almost, <laughs> almost in the movie. He was almost in the movie, and they pulled him out. Uh, and, um, and then he they rewrote and re uh, the it's so that his character was just intertwined into the the main bad guys plotline. Um, Randall Pierce from This Is Us. And so then you get to the second half of the film, and they like literally say lines of dialogue like, "Remember back on Halloween." You're like, what, two hours ago? Like, what are you talking about? Remember back in was two hours ago? It's because they reworked the whole thing. And that's the same reason, like, why all of a sudden does Thomas Jane and, and uh, was it, Key and Peele suddenly have their best buddies with this? And it just comes out of nowhere in the last 25 minutes of the movie. So it was all rewrites because they had to redo everything. I, it's, I need to speak on behalf of... of of test films, uh, t- test screenings, because they really. <laughs> <laughs> what, Brian? What? What's your problem, mate? <laughs> <laughs> the, they they really just put everybody they can. Uh, as somebody who's been kicked out of a test screening. <laughs> <laughs> See how that that. feels. (laughs) Hey, I got it. I got to use it once in a while. Uh, They they really have every race, creed, sex, and like they they have all bases covered, regardless of of, you know whether or not they'll be invested, interested, whatever in the film to begin with. And I think it's absurd that they they give this much power to people that that are just going to watch a free movie where. You know, they, they give these test audiences so much power and it's like you have an 80 year old man watching a horror movie that's just there for the free popcorn. Of course, he's going to tell you the third act sucks and you're going to listen to him. What are you doing? He, he's only here because it's yeah. free. What are you doing, man? They just give way too much yeah. power to that audience. My cousin went to go see a test screening of Watchmen. Do you want to know what his thoughts that he wrote on the comment card were? Too much blue dick. That's that's test screenings. <laughs> I had the what, opposite what you, opinion of that movie, but yeah, that's just not me. yeah not enough. <laughs> Longer, please. <laughs> when was it just right? When was it the perfect amount? Uh, when when you have when you look, I mean, you can even bring up something like Rotten Tomatoes, where you look at a movie and it's like, okay, seventy five percent of the people that we consider critics liked it, twenty five percent hated it, and you have a test screening. I mean, who's to say all twenty five percent of those might have been your test screening? Right. You know what I mean, like you know, right. there's no. There's no vetting process. Like, hey, did you like the first four? Okay, yeah. cool. Sit down. Did you hate the first four? Okay, you will get your opinion. It's just okay, you know, whatever, guys. What do, what do you think about our movie? And yeah, it, it's I don't know. I really do want to see the the original cut of this film. I don't think it was successful enough. We're not going to get a 
a, a Snyder cut movie for the Shane Black cut, but um, I'm morbidly curious on it. Mm. It's rewatching it for this. I, I was like tracking along with the tone and the vibe. I was like, all right, did, I'm pretty sure this one goes off the rails at some point in time. As soon as Halloween night, the dogs show up, oh, 20 foot tall yeah. predator. Yeah. It just like the movie stopped working for me. On really a dime. Quickly. Yeah. Just like very quickly. I was like tracking along with the characters. And then it's like, nope. <laughs> Even this guy, he says his superpower, he can eat things and poop them out when he needs them too. Yeah. Like, this large metal ball. Like I, I think that would cause damage. Uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> anyway that was his mutant power in logan yes <laughs> predator 2 just barely edged it out at 15 uh me and cp agreed at 19 sean and brian uh had a little higher at 13 and 12 uh i'll let sean take this one sean um yeah it's, it's an interesting movie it kind of combines a, a bunch of things that i enjoy obviously i love the first predator movie it has a lot of the people in front of behind the scenes that worked on the Lethal Weapon movies and therefore has kind of a very much a Lethal Weapon vibe combined with, of course, Predator. And then there's overt cocaine use in it, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I don't think the movie's ever quite as good as all of that sounds, though, for whatever reason. It's one that I can never quite pinpoint exactly why I don't resonate with this much as I think I should. But it's like, I'm watching it being like, yeah, this really does kind of feel like a lethal weapon movie. And man, he's skinning people and he's taking on drug lords. There's some like mythology stuff that I find interesting. Gary Busey's talking about aliens. But it, it, I, I, for whatever reason, it kind of falls a little bit flat for me. I, I have it higher up, but I think that's, you know, as we've said repeatedly, yeah. there's a lot of... You think lethal weapon, huh? Not RoboCop? RoboCop. Definitely Rob. Because well, you have Danny I, Glover, and then, but likewise, yeah. the producer ever produced Lethal Weapon. Uh, Gary yeah. Busey is in Lethal Weapon. Um, they're, 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 um, uh, Richard Donner's cousin, his last name is Khan. He's in it too. There's just a lot of cast from Lethal Weapon that's in this movie. The same that's producer, fair. and they're in LA. Yeah, that's, so they took both, the cast both. of Lethal Weapon and put them in Robocop. Mm. <laughs> both me and CP mentioned that. In a, it's, it's funny because, like, none of us, for, for anyone who. who you know, everyone who's watching, none of us see each other's videos or anything before, no. you know, yeah. before they all go out. So it's it, it's just bizarre how how many times we, we sometimes just say the same things. Uh, but, yeah, both me and CP called out the, the RoboCop thing. I, I think it's just, like, for me, uh, Predator 2 was, at, at the time that I first watched it, it was probably the most extreme film I'd, I'd ever seen. Um, I mean, by an, like now it's probably quite tame, but it's just there's so much in that film. Like, like just the opening, you know, it's, it's so when, when busy. It's, yeah, it's it's really busy, and you got all. It's like it's a it's a it's a version of LA that, quite frankly, does not exist. Uh, mm. And I say that as someone having never been to LA in my <laughs> life. So it's just I, I can tell you that that is not a version of LA that exists. You know where where gun cocaine runners and, and what are literally shooting up the, the, the police department with uh semi-automatics and so it's just no it's sorry not buying it, it, it's 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 right out of uh robocop basically that that is i expect robocop to show up at any moment and start you know breaking skulls and stuff but um it for me it's it's kind of why i like the film it sets out the stall right from the, right off the bat that look this this ain't we're not going to be subtle here at all there's nothing subtle about this movie it is extreme in every way violence swearing sex it, it's 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 all there and it's just like okay um <laughs> It's it's like I say as a, as a kid who was well I think I was thirteen, um, and a friend of mine asked it wanted me to come over to his house to watch it because he said he'd, he'd got it on video because um, his his dad was one of these who just like yeah, got all the eighteens and just let him watch them and stuff. Um, I, my my mum and dad they weren't like dead set against me watching stuff, but they, they never went out of the way to let me watch eighteens or eight. So I went, I watched it, and I was like, blimey, that's that's extreme. As a 13-year-old, I was like, that's extreme. Uh, this is the same friend who also first showed me uh, Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lee. Good friend. That's a good but, uh, friend. Right 
<laughs> but uh but yeah it's just and it so i I've, i think i've got a bit of nostalgia for it maybe uh but i watch it now and i, I still find it highly entertaining yeah. yeah there's there's two halves to this movie there's the ultra 90s cookie cutter you know cop storyline and then you have predator carnage in the concrete jungle. I yeah. love this half. This half doesn't age very well at all. There, you know, 80s has this weird nostalgia about it. 90s doesn't quite have that yet. When you say that thing is 80s as hell, it's like, oh, that's cool. When you say that thing is 90s as hell, it's negative. Uh, so it's, it's, I don't but know. Predator 2 doesn't feel 90s to me, it feels 80s. It does. It's all, it's, I, it's, I was just going to say, where do you put Point Break then? Because Point Break feels 80s, but it's not exactly 80s. Uh, I mean, in the middle somewhere, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about here. Here we go. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> he did it to himself. Yay! <laughs> Number 14, sticking with Predators. We've got uh, AVP, the original, the OG. Oh, um, Sean had it the highest of 10. I'm Woo! a little below him at 12, a little below me as CP, and Brian very down on it at 23. So Supposed to be 16, Brian. Yeah, I'm going to start <laughs> with Brian. ABP. <laughs> I love when it starts with the sigh and the... It's like, oh, that could be enough. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. That's all I've got. It's just... <clears throat> bear in mind that um, when this came out, there weren't that many stinkers in both of these franchises. Um, for, for the as far as the fans were concerned, uh, you know, mm, Pre yes. Predator had two films that arguably, arguably are pretty decent. Um, you know, like Ridley Scott divided a lot of people, I guess, with his new movies. Even though I I love them. Uh, this but, is before this Prometheus. Was before all, uh, this was after. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So th uh, that's what I'm saying. So this that's before, before Prometheus and Covenant came along and 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 kind of put the Alien franchise in a bit more of a questionable questionable spot. Um, so AVP comes out. It's like, look, Freddy versus Jason. It's 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 it's. Interesting idea. This is an entertaining idea, but let's not kid ourselves that that's coming off the back of uh, a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know. Whereas AVP, you've got two major, major. Like this isn't just something that horror fans go for. Like everyone knows Alien and Predator. Okay, you don't have to just be a horror fan to be connected to those franchises. You've got three absolute classics in the first Predator film, the first two Aliens films. It's like this this is you can't overstate just how great these properties are. If you if you get them together and and do do something right with them. And who do they hand it to? Paul <laughs> W S Bleeding Anderson. The guy who has cocked up more computer game adaptations than I've had dinners, quite frankly. It's just, <laughs> this guy cannot write dialogue to save his life. He sits in the Rob Zombie school of dialogue writing. Oh, no. um, you know, very not, different not, classes. <laughs> very, different, very different styles, admittedly, but still very crap. Like, the, the, I never believe... The dialogue that comes out of the words of of Anderson's characters, they they they, they, they all feel like Basil exposition. All of the, his characters just exposit at you. It's just like, yeah, information dump, information dump. There's no actual characters there. So by the time we get to the end and Sanna Lathan is teaming up with the Predator, and we're supposed to believe she's a badass on the kind of Ripley scale. I don't buy it for a minute. I'm just like, nope, sorry, bye. Try, try better, do better. It's just there's there's nothing about her as a character that make that wins me over because she's just she's not even a character. She spent most of the film just being exposition, and it's just, yeah. I do not. Uh, yeah, it it's angers me. It's just kind of a popcorn movie, would be, though, Brian. That is I correct, mean, CB. That is correct. Yeah, it's it's just say like, that again. Say that again. You broke it's up. Just a, say that again. 
It's just a popcorn movie. You're not. You know. Yeah. You're, you're, that's that's the problem. That's the problem. You've taken. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is my point Ooh. this is my point alien the alien franchise alone right is is it is it's not just a popcorn franchise no, I, I, it's I a agree. franchise that it's it, it's a franchise that requires you know a, a level of detail and a look at thematics that that you know that means something that 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 have characters that you really really root for and cling to well, and and it's just like well, you're talking about a franchise that had left us with the human human hybrid that was the last we saw of Alien and Cocaine Predator. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, should, yeah. yeah, but should that yeah. should that be an excuse to should that be an excuse to then say, well, we've well, we've, we're not we've exactly kind of gone off point, so, we, so we may as well just go to the bottom of the point, Yeah, I think it I know, but when when you, when you say when you say the Alien franchise to people. They're not thinking, oh, yeah, Alien 3 and Resurrection. You know, when you say Predator to people, they're like, oh, yeah, Predator 2. Love that movie. No, they're thinking Arnie in Predator. They're thinking Sigourney Weaver in the first two Alien films. Sure. So no, when you I, say AVP, you. When, you th- when you say AVP to people, we're getting a movie that's coming that is Aliens versus Predator. They're not saying, oh, Oh, Alien Resurrection meets Predator 2. I'm there. No, they're saying Predator with Arnie meets Alien with Sigourney Weaver's Ripley. That's what they're saying. That's what you're thinking no. in your head. And instead, no. we get pyramids, a dodgy CGI, and the no. crappiest dialogue that's ever been uttered out of characters' mouths. Mm-hmm. It's rubbish. As a Friday the 13th fan, not for one second did I think during Freddy versus Jason, oh man, what happened to that black girl? I was really concerned about her getting a nose job. I didn't care about them whatsoever. They were merely fodder. And they, they took the same thing because it worked. Freddy versus Jason made nearly $100 million. Uh, again, again, cynically so, I- I'll give you that. Again, the studios... again missing the point. You're, well, t- you're no, comparing you're... Freddy and Jason. Uh, which made a of of serious thematic franchises <laughs> that have a lot to say about dreams exactly. the way the mind <laughs> yeah. we're really afraid exactly. of, as well exactly. as Jason's view of morality. Exactly. And he doesn't believe that Lack teenagers should swimming. be doing yep. drugs yep. or each yep. other. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sean. He just he just talk, he just nailed it exactly. Well, That's the point. You, you can't compare the two. You can't say, we're going to we're going to take the alien predator franchises mine. and bring them down to Freddy oh, v Jason level. Fuck. No, it, it's it's uh, I think it, it's a matter of expectations. If you walk in thinking, okay, learn your lessons from Alien Three and Four, learn your lessons from Predator Two. Let's get back on track with AVP. Then yes, you walk in and go, okay, you didn't learn anything. I remember walking into this movie and I already felt like the temperature of both of those franchises had been cooled down significantly to where this was just what I expected at the time. I was like, okay, obviously it's going to be a schlock fest of monster versus monster. Um, and uh, aside from it being a little bit light on the carnage, which I have to check out that unrated cut, Sean, and see if maybe that fixes it. Um, that was the main thing that I had against the movie. There's a lot of things that you're absolutely right with everything that you're saying. Uh, but when I walk into it, my expectations aren't expecting any of those things. I'm not expecting awesome characters. I'm not expecting any philosophical storyline. I'm not expecting Arnie level awesomeness. I- I'm just like, okay, get the monsters together, have some cool stuff happen, explosions, blood, good. And, and that's that's what the movie delivers for me. I can have enough fun with it. Um, I don't watch it often, but if it was on, it's not the first movie that I would just turn the channel on. Um <clears throat> I, I like where it goes with the Predator teaming up with her against the Queen. And I, I thought that the whole visual aesthetic of the of the pyramid and, you know, having it be this training ground that the humans, you know, they start the conveyor belts, the eggs come out, then the xenomorphs are let loose and the Queen's electrocuted. I kind of liked all of that. So, I mean, it's 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 lowbrow. It's not aiming very high, but I wasn't really I, I wasn't walking in very high. So uh, I have enough fun with it. So now they're all quiet. <laughs> to finish my point, it's not like either Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the 13th fans said, you know what, Freddy vs. Jason, that's my new favorite movie. But 
studio said, holy shit, this thing made $82 million. What did Predator 2 make? $40 million. What did Alien Resurrection make? $57 million. Maybe if we take this, this cynical look at just taking one thing from the franchise and this other thing, just forgetting character altogether, just two toys going bang, 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 bang. Yeah. That's it. That's all we're going to give to fans because that's what they want, apparently, because they spent $82 million watching two toys bang that's what i, what I was trying to get to. I, didn't, I didn't do it brian <laughs> but, i so, said i didn't uh, i didn't do it yeah, mm -hmm. so, all right sean for me i mean i just kind of go into this one and approach it as it's fan fiction it's mm. i mean it's kind of what you mentioned of it's two toys doing <laughs> smashing like what's that's the whole concept it's fan fiction so if you're Brian and that in or actually you're not this which way are you? There. If you're Brian and inherently that's offensive to you, I get it. Like I get the idea that if like uh, uh, aliens and predator the the first or alien aliens and predator those are like top of the genre, and mm -hmm. then you went Ooh, what if we just like them attack each other? I get it. like I get it. like you make, like if you hate that I get it. I'm able to watch this. The same way I'm able to watch the crappy Terminator sequels that most people hate as fan fiction. Mm. And I can have fun with them. It, it works as fan fiction for me. Uh, I call them Taco Bell movies. A lot of times I go to Taco Bell and they give me tacos and they're soggy. They've been sitting in the tray too long. I still douse them in the Diablo sauce and I still love them. And they Even, stick to the paper. And they stick to the paper. <laughs> like there's no way I could possibly objectively defend these as good tacos. Doesn't mean I don't eat them every single week. That's kind of what, you know, this movie is kind of for me. Of like, cool. hey, hey, there's nothing. I can't really defend it, but there's enough uh, just goofy fun. And it knows it's goofy fun. Mm. It, it doesn't think that's anything more than. Yeah, it's on its own universe. And, it, and, it, and it's that mentality, Sean, that keeps on giving us more Transformers movies. Yeah. yeah. And they're all awesome. <laughs> they all are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> to go along with this super chat, Brian, I got one question to close out on. If the movie had the carnage level of Requiem, how much higher would it be for you? Would it make a difference at all? <clears throat> no, because say what you want about Requiem, but at least the characters in that, I believed they were genuine people. <laughs> I believed that the, the dialogue that was coming out of their mouths felt like it came from people who would be in that situation. Uh, and it felt a lot, hell of a lot more natural to me. Um, like seriously, what next time you watch AVP again, just listen to how much of what people say is explaining stuff for the viewer, and how much of it is actually stuff that is 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 oh, revealing to yes, who oh. they are as a character. It is, it's yeah, it's just it pisses me off, quite frankly, <laughs> because when when you've got such a rich law to delve into. Um, how, I mean, how badass would it be to? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, if we could get a uh, AVP on the level of the original films, yes, I, I'm, I'm there. Brian, I, I would, I would like you to take in Voorhees, the fan film, and film yourself, please, and just, uh, <laughs> just that's all because we need, is, is we need that be on tape. Torture. Yes. Is this going to yes. be? Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's a good segue. <laughs> Critters at 13. Um, Brian had it the highest, obviously, at 8. Uh, special film to him. 11. I, I, I enjoyed it. CP had that one significantly higher than the other ones on his list uh, mm -hmm. at 15. And Sean still pretty low on the whole thing at 21. <laughs> so, Brian, obviously, I'm going to kick off with you. Uh, the original film. Tell us your story. So, back in the time of VCR, gotcha. Um, yeah. yeah, VCR, big, big, heavy brick-sized tape things that you mm. put in. We got our <laughs> first. Bitch didn't rewind this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good times, good times. Um, so we we got our first video player, and um, me and my brothers were all given one video cassette each. We were told that's yours. Tape what you want off TV, and 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 you know. Oh man, one tape! 
Exactly. We had one. Oh, it went on you know. ultra slow and you can do like 40 hours. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Quality, yeah. It doesn't matter when you're a kid. It's yeah, about quality no, no. Or, or quantity, not quality. Yeah. 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 So, so I'm like, so I've got my one tape and like I, I tape films. Like, oh, that looks interesting. That looks interesting. I tape it and it'd be like, yeah. Critters came on. Now I remember Critters because I'm like, pretty sure that was that awesome cover on the, uh, the you know, you go into the video shops and there's that, that oh, yeah. monster thing on the cover. And it's just, I just, I always remember that cover just sticking out and uh, like a sore thumb in the, in the video shop. And I just always wanted to see it. Uh, I wonder how many artists have been murdered due to having such great artwork, yet the movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and some <laughs> random fan killed them because of it. <laughs> Sorry, Brian, go ahead. Uh, but, uh, but I remember, I was like, that's, that's the awesome poster. I want to see that film. So I recorded it, and I just, I just fell in love with it. Now, bearing in mind, my, my, you know, my wealth of movie knowledge was obviously very limited at this point. I was about nine years old, ten years old, um, but it, it was just—it was a horror movie. But it was perfectly acceptable for me as a kid to be watching. My parents had no qualms with it. You know, it wasn't too over the top that it would, you know, be offensive to anyone. It was just, it, like I say, it was on that Gremlins kind of rung of the ladder, where you know, Gremlins is that horror film you show to your kids. Critters is kind of on the same same ballpark, mm. but for me, I as much as I loved Gremlins as a kid, I, it just never made sense to me. I couldn't get my head around those rules and how they just didn't <laughs> make sense. Every hour of the day is past midnight. Be a bit clearer, please, someone. Um, and and, it, and the, the, uh, again with Gremlins as well is that shift in tone a lot. Like the we'll get there. Get a bit, yeah, we'll get there anyway. But with Critters, it just it just felt. A lot tidier to me. It was the story was 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 a lot more well structured. I thought I liked that they stuck with this family rather than going to tons of different people in the town. I know they do go a bit to the town as the bounty hunters are making their way to the house, but it's mostly focused on this house, this this tight family unit that kind of bitch at each other. They don't you know quite get on in some respects, but when it comes down to it, they're a solid family unit. You, you band together to to thwart this this threat and and i just i loved it uh as a kid loved it and i would get home from school every day put my vc my videotape into the vcr and watch critters and i must have watched it about 80 times across the course of, of one year um and and yeah and then you know eventually i fell in love with other movies batman true romance things like that and and then i kind of stopped watching critters really but i always had that nostalgia for it and you know many 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 years later went back watched it based purely on that nostalgia and unlike certain films i'm looking at you monster squad that you know i loved as a kid had super nostalgia for and then watched and thought ah oh, that's not good mm. critters didn't fall into that grouping i watched it i'm like damn this is good the special effects on it has crap as anything is really not got good special effects, but it's a good film i still enjoy it on that level that i did as a kid so um that's all i can say really it's just it lives up to my nostalgia of it um and so few films do cp yeah it, it's a b movie we're, we're, it is a B movie. You're and, right. It and, is. And, and it's it, it's dead in the middle for me. I I, I it's I, whatever. <laughs> we're two twenty seven. <laughs> Skip me, please. <laughs> Sean. Yeah, I went to go see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles last night, <laughs> and in the movie, Raphael goes to the movies, and in the movie, he walks out and he goes, oh, "Who comes up with this crap?" And the billboard behind him reads, "Critters." The poster behind him critters yeah i um you know i this isn't a franchise that is is stuck with me over the decades at all i mentioned before i watched the second one back in the day and i watched this yeah. one back in the day but um you know th these ones just don't don't do much for me um perfectly fine in the middle is, is b movies but they're, they're just not ones that i would re-explore 
Yeah, this was a first time watch for me. I bought the box set from Shout Factory last year um, with the intention of reviewing it because Brian had talked it up so much. I was like, all right, I'm going to I'm gonna watch and review this franchise at some point. Then if we decided on... you don't want that box set anymore, I will be happy to buy it off you. Oh, no, sir. I, I, will, I, will, I will keep it. I will keep it. <laughs> <laughs> but if I get a hold of a second one, I'll keep you in mind. Uh, Cody Claus will, will give you a gift. But... Um, <laughs> No, I, I watched it for the first time, and in the first one, I like I, I I watched it, and I'm like, I can understand. Um, there's some movies you watch that you're like, if I grew up with this, I would probably be saying a lot of the same things that Brian said. Uh, it's one of those movies that that nostalgia chunk of it is a very important piece. Uh, but even without that nostalgia, I enjoyed it for what it was. It, it, it's B movie, but it's unabashedly B movie. It's not like it's trying to present itself as anything other than that. Um, you get into the bounty hunters and everything. That's that's kind of fun. Where they they don't understand technology at all and driving cars backwards. And uh, D. Wallace is always fun. And any '80s movie there, she pops up. There's like a little charm added to it. Uh, and I like the isolation of it. I like the isolation of the farmhouse. I thought the kid was a fun character. I was glad he came back for two. Um, it, it's it's fun. You know, when the one gets obliterated by the shotgun and then the other one turns to it and goes fuck. And then they run away. Like I, I laughed. There, there, there was enough cheesy B movie stuff that appealed to me. Um, yeah, I had it at eleven, so I, I liked it enough. Uh, number twelve, guys, I'll... guys, guys. Um, I think I'm gonna have to go. Uh oh, because because my my wife's struggling with the kids. They're just Uh-oh. not sleeping at all. <laughs> They're not sleeping. So. You, you, you can either carry on without me, or we could maybe do a part two of this next, like in a couple of nights or something. It's up to you. I won't be offended either way. Uh, but, we'll probably keep it going just for the sake of yeah. the, the 240 people watching in case they can't come back. But um, I'll yeah. tell you what, we'll, uh, if you come back, it's just as easy as a mouse click. Like if in 15 okay. minutes everything's good, just okay. pop right back in. No I'll worries. keep an eye out for you. Okay, but uh, Brian, before you leave, uh, let everybody know where they could find you. Uh, if you got anything coming out in November and December, which you and I do, if you want to go ahead and talk about that a little bit, yes. So, uh, you won't see much content from me, um, over the next month or so because we're kind of working on some mammoth videos. Me, me and Cody are both going to be doing our top 50 comedies. Our top 50 uh, horror movies, our top 50 action movies, and then at the end of December, we're going to be rounding it off with our top 100 movies of all time. Uh, So, um, yeah, that's going to take a lot of work. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah, I've I've got a I've got another David Fincher review that I've I've done. um, That's that will make its way i've already filmed that so i'll edit that get that out but then it's then it's knuckling down to do those videos which is going to take a lot of time and energy so but hopefully it'll be worth it um so you have fun there you go yeah sounds good well i'm gonna have brian's info down in the uh video description as always once we log off i'll get all everything plugged in so if you've not already subscribed go subscribe to him brian we love you love your crazy opinions as always i love that we get to critters and then you bow out (laughs) <laughs> go take care of those youngins and if uh, like i said if, if if you clear up just come right back in and i'll, I'll p- plug you right back in will do okay That's good and then there were two and now sean's wow. face is covered so uh coming up right after that this one surprised me which is going to be interesting conversation just between me and you <laughs> me and uh, you. <laughs> yeah the thing 2011, I believe, uh, came in at 12. So this is the prequel with the exact same title for some reason. Um, I had it the lowest, oddly enough. If you know what my number one is, that's funny. Um, I had it at 18. CP had it at 13. I remember him saying on rewatch he was shocked at how much it went up. Uh, You had it at 9, and Brian had it at 11. Uh, Was this a first-time watch for you? Yep, first-time watch. I had no real preconceived notions. I didn't know the backstory on it. So I just kind of went in... Probably kind of assuming the worst because I hadn't heard a lot of chatter about it, mm-hmm. and or the chatter I had heard was oh, it's nothing compared to the original one, which isn't really saying much because it's if you have a movie that's praised at the level of of the John Carpenter one, then yeah, it's not surprising. So I just went in and watched it. I was like, okay, that's actually a pretty nice little companion with the the previous one. 
Yeah. Uh, it doesn't hurt the mythology. And goofy CGI aside, it works well enough for what it's trying to do. So that was kind of my take on it. I didn't like. I didn't. Th- this is a tricky set of movies because so many of them are just awful, or they're movies that legitimately disappointed me in some way. Yeah. So it's just it's a really tricky list because it's like it. Like I look at this and I go, wow, that seems really high in this list. But would I rather rewatch this or watch one of these other ones? I think I would rewatch this one for what it is. So that's kind of where some of these numbers come from. But it was this. Uh, I mean, I, every time you do one of these thirty-one and thirty-ones. You're just going back and forth and like, okay, if I evaluate it based off this or rank it based off this criteria, it would go here. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's that's where this one kind of came from for me. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, I love the original thing so much that I probably just have a little bit more biased against this one because it makes that cardinal sin of the the CGI. That's probably the way that I'll, I'll justify it. Um, taking that out of it, the movie's pretty damn good. Like story-wise, character-wise, tone-wise – continuity wise especially if you watch this one and then immediately watch john carpenter's they do an awesome job at just like linking things up and putting like the axe in the wall in the exact same spot and you watch the first 10 minutes of john carpenter's halloween i remember going to see this in theaters and immediately going home watching john yeah. carpenter and going hey that's where that happened well, they lined all of this up it, it's pretty amazing how well they were able to link it up it's kind of like when you watch rogue one you immediately go oh i want to go home and watch uh star wars yeah, um, it's that sort of thing happened with this one. I did, you know, I had just watched the thing the day before, so I didn't want to do that. But uh, yeah, right. I mean, it was like you're like, okay, man, they did, they did it. Wait, like, the that was the left? number one job, and they did it. Oh, hey, hi, sorry. Brian had to attend to kids. I told him if he gets a chance to, we'll plug him right back in. But he might be gone. Um, we're talking about the thing prequel. Um, oh, but yes, uh, it, Mary Elizabeth Winstead is great as the lead, uh, and, and you. Uh, Damn, what's the dude's name from Warrior? Help me out, Sean. Joel Edgerton. Joel Edgerton is in this. He's very good as well. I loved the new rule that they found out about like the piercings and the fillings. Yeah, like, the hey, filling. you can't recreate that. I thought that was very smart. Sometimes when you try to add like lore or rules to a pre established, you can really step on your foot. I thought that was great. It's just the CGI that holds it back because the whole movie, every time the thing comes out, I'm like, ah. Oh! What the hell? And if you know the backstory where they had all these great practical effects and you can see like little YouTube videos that like little models of it. And then the studio just said, nah, screw all that money. We just yeah, what if, washed yeah. it over in the last minute with CGI. And it's not even good CGI. It's like bad, bad CGI. It's just it's so distracting for me that the whole experience, every time I'm watching it, I'm just like. And so if there was a cut of this movie that would like. You know, like if they've got a Snyder cut thing where, you know, fans donated $2 million or whatever, and they could go and, and wash away all that CGI, this might be in like the top seven or eight for me. Um, but yeah, it is just, it's a frustrating watch CP. Yeah. So as I planted the seed earlier about, you know, something that, that fell for you as far as what you were thinking going into this, this is the movie that like jumped for me like I, I thought i hated it a lot more than this last watch um i quite enjoyed it i don't know if it's because i watched it and then watched 1982 directly after it it's a much more fulfilling experience if you do do that yes but um yeah everything for every reason you just said it's 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 the cgi it, that really holds it down but like you said, the, the the elements of the the fillings and you know that's something, you know you can kind of play detective at home and like okay which one, uh, which one do we have left there and oh all right that that's cool, uh, you know why they titled it the thing is is beyond me but um, yeah I'm with you. Let's let's have I mean, can we kind of go off and and do something else with this please? Yes, supposedly there's a remake. We'll see. We'll see. Um, number 11, Prometheus. Sean was the Lomax of the group. 23. CP had it at 5. Brian had it at 7. And I was dead in the middle at 16. And I had this one in Covenant kind of interchangeable for me. Um, Woo! Some of you guys. Sean, <laughs> why do you despise I, Ridley Scott? Uh, <laughs> is this the most divisive film on the list? Perhaps. Um, not quite. I mean, uh, that's a pretty polarizing one. It was pretty polarizing with Wait, mine. I can, I can get the official. If you give me time, a, I can get it. That's an 18 split there. Yeah, yeah hold I on. think I, that's I the furthest get... we've been apart. 
probably is. Yeah, uh, go go ahead. I'll, I'll get it for you, but I, you uh, might so, be right. So for me, this would kind of factor into what some of you have mentioned about other movies of just the level of disappointment in a film. Yeah. And going in with such high expectations, a movie that has all the resources to be great and then just absolutely does not work for me. And I have been trying to like this movie for eight years now, ever since it came out. I have no reason to do anything but love this movie. And every time I watch it, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it's going on. I don't know why the plot is so so convoluted, why there's so many moving parts, why that zombie guy just showed up. Why did they get <laughs> Guy Pierce to play a 90-year-old man when there's 90-year-old men in the world? I just I don't I don't know why they made any of these decisions. And you know, I don't know why Charlie's Throne is running forward as opposed to running sideways at the end of the film. And I don't understand why everyone is talking about the meaning of life. I, I don't know why a scientist has discovered alien life but is complaining about not discovering it quite enough. And so he's whining. I mean, everything about it is just it just feels like a a beautiful mess. Like mm. it's gorgeous. Some nice body horror, and um, but on a, a plot level, it doesn't work, and it, it has the prequel problem of answering questions I was not asking with answers I do not like. So. Yeah, uh, I, I agree 100% with you. Um, for a movie that was billed the entire time before it came out as the Alien prequel, and Ridley Scott's triumphant return to tell the backstory to his iconic movie, this movie really goes around its ass to get to its elbow to tell the story of Xenomorphs. Um, and, and there's so many times in the movie where something's about to happen that would so easily just tie directly into Alien, but it doesn't. It ties into something else that is eventually going to tie. It's like it, yeah. it, it takes a two-step process and makes it a five-step process. Right, right. Well, it's like, like even at the the beginning of the movie, the way it's set up of like you have the worms, you have the goo, the worms, uh, the worms get into the goo, and like there's just so many moving parts to just get to creatures killing people, yeah. And so you have ten different ways people are dying as opposed like some of the, what made the original ones work is the simplicity of it. There there is a life cycle, but it's straightforward. Whereas here, it's like all these different things are happening, and there's different, and it just just too much stuff for what is a fairly simple and straightforward concept. Yeah. Um, so to answer your question, Sean, this is the most divisive 18 slots. The second most is critters with 13. <clears throat> um, well, I understand the, the low one on both of those. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, Sean versus Brian on both. <laughs> versus me this time. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I understand, I understand an alien fan walking into this and saying, no, just, just no. no. Just no. But um, I liked. All right. Let's let's find out what the deal with 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 this d d jockey. Uh, what the, whatever the hell they call space that. jockey. Space jockey. Yeah. All right. I, I, I'm cool with this. Let, let's just go on this journey for a little bit. Um, fine. Um, I'll, I'll 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 double your sentiment. Why why they're taking the long way to introduce aliens. This movie doesn't have to associate itself with aliens, as far as I'm concerned. It's its own little sci-fi, uh, without having to go back to you know make itself this this ridiculous prequel. Um, there's a bunch of Easter eggs in the movie that are just fine. Like the companies are 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 just good enough. Like this could have been like a a prequel four times, you know, down the road which I thought was the original plan. Plus the other part of this is I did watch all of the, the marketing materials where you see, um, shit, I forgot his name. Uh, old man. Guy. Guy Pierce. Guy, Guy Pierce, Guy Pierce is, you yeah, know, they, he does, he gives a Ted talk. They yeah. Like a, right. Like a yeah. Yeah. So they, they, I, I, I scooped up all of that and I was just totally on board with, with whatever this new thing was. And yes, a lot of stupid decisions are made, but damn it, that's what happens in horror movies. And um, written by Damon Lindelof, who at the time was coming off of Lost, which is a very questions, who cares about the answers deal. And I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of a fangirl for, hmm, what if? And then just 
never answering it. So <laughs> that's kind of what Prometheus is. Like, oh, why are we here? Uh, okay. That's, that's good enough reason. Brian? Prometheus, Pr Brian. Prometheus. I love Prometheus. He's great. <laughs> Thank you. We uh, we yeah. determined this was the biggest split between yeah. Sean and and you and um, CP. There's a what is an eighteen point split on this yeah. one. Serious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Coming well, I right was higher than you, Brian. Speaking of split. Oh boy. Gremlins at number ten. Uh, Sean and I agree that it's awesome at seven. CP a little <laughs> less fond memories at eleven, and then we got Mr. Lomax. Telling us that it's rubbish at twenty. Uh, never said it was rubbish. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, yeah, Gremlins is one of those movies to me. It's uh, I grew up watching it. It's it's got a lot of nostalgia. I loved it as a kid. I love it as an adult. Uh, it hits a lot of different notes. It's a horror movie, but it's a family movie. It's a Halloween movie, but it's a Christmas movie. It's you know I love the creature effects. You got like the cute side of things with Gizmo. That's very family. For, oh, I want one of those. And then you have Furbies for that reason. And then even whenever they, you know, eat after midnight or at any hour of the day, uh, it, it, they turn into these green monsters. And I just love the 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 balance they have of you know not quite scary, but just when they're throwing plates at the mom and they're like ah, and just like laugh at everything and just these little gremlins. Yeah. And, and I just love that whole chaotic nature that they have. They're just there to just cause chaos and just. You know, go to a movie theater and watch Snow White. It just, it's a very fun movie for me. I don't really appreciate a lot of Joe Dante's movies. This is the one that I do. Um, yeah, not really a whole lot else to say about it. For me, it's definitely a classic. Brian? I I think it's a good film. I do. I think it's At a good 20? film. I, I enjoy it. Yes, yes. At 20. I'd give it, I'd give it, a, I'd give it a three star rating. Um, I can't so get any can't loud. He can't get worked up right now. He can't start yelling and I'm getting passionate. So we need to say a lot more things that would rile him up. As a to his yes, indeed. No, I I like Gremlins, but it's 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 one of those movies that when I watch through an adult mind, that nos that like the thing I was talking about earlier, the nostalgia I have for it doesn't quite live up the, the, the film doesn't quite live up to it i think um, we could all say that though right i mean <clears throat> it's not really for us anymore <clears throat> yeah. no it's still for me. right really okay all right <laughs> <clears throat> yeah so so that's it really it's just like there are things in it that as a kid you don't think about because hey there's little monsters on screen that's great but then <laughs> When you get older and you start looking at plot and you start thinking that don't make sense and the tone really shifts don't there, doesn't it? <clears throat> you got a moment where it's really, really dark. This this girl is Santa Claus story. <laughs> yeah, tell it like that haunted me as a child. As as a child, he, hearing that story, it's so haunting. And then it's so got goofy and played so serious too. It's, it's like just the, <laughs> the of dad, all the ingredients yeah. and it, yeah, the dad even decided he was going to go film. down a, a chimney and broke his neck and just got stuck uh, and just stayed there and rotted for weeks. Uh, horrific, but, uh, but awesome. yeah, it, it's just yeah, you go from that to proper <laughs> slapstick. I -ho, I -ho. Yeah, <laughs> just. Tony's all over the place. So, <clears throat> yeah. Sean, thoughts? Oh, no, yeah. Thought Gizmo that. is just one of the most adorable film creatures of all time. Beat um, out only by what's on your shirt there, sir. Yeah. So, um, sorry. And sorry. both of them have the big exaggerated ears. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, it's. Um, and the gremlins themselves, just a lot of fun as these mischievous creatures that just do bizarre things. Uh, what I would said in kind of my my take on it is that it's a little bit like a, a catchy mega hit pop song that everybody knows. It's not necessarily 
uh, great, but it is highly entertaining and highly hmm. memorable. I think there are a lot of things about it that are a little bit, um, you know, there are tone issues, some very odd shifts. Um, but it's just, it's the sort of thing that, it, it, even the quirkiness of rules that don't make any sense is almost the charm of it. Everybody knows these these rules about them, even though they, they make no sense. Like, what, so it's a creature that can't have water? <laughs> uh, so how does that work? Um, how does it live? Yeah. <laughs> so, but like the quirky that it, this, that it doesn't care about any of that is om- like almost kind of the appealing part to it. But, you know, I, I, I don't think it's quite as good as some of the other legendary 80s classics, but I totally understand why it is as memorable as it is. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Coming in above that is Alien Covenant. Uh, Sean was much more forgiving of this one at 11. Uh, mm-hmm. I had it at 15. It was just one point above Prometheus. They're interchangeable for me. CP at 9, Brian the highest at 6. Um, so I, I'll kind of lead off with this one. Uh, this one... I've seen it twice, once in theaters. I rewatched it once uh, whenever we were going to do an Alien stream a couple years back. Um, I think my problem with this movie is that it gives me more of what I want while bundling it with everything I didn't like about Prometheus. Um, so it's kind of like it, yeah. it's, it's trying to hide the pill and the cheese. Um, it, it, it advertised the whole movie as, okay, guys, we know you, a lot of you, not everybody, a lot of you didn't care for the direction we went here's what you wanted with the other movie xenomorphs here you go and that's the most that's the most forgettable and like afterthought afterthought part of the movie to me is they just kind of like it's almost like studio mandated the xenomorph be in there that's how like thrown in it is at the end um but the whole movie is you know it's a little bit darker it's a little bit closer in tone with what i would expect for alien uh you have you know the ragtag group of guys are going to go down to this planet try to find a new earth uh, I, I liked most of the characters in the movie. Uh, everybody really overblown how good Danny McBride was. Everybody was like, he's amazing in this. And I'm like, he's, he's got Danny three McBride. lines. Yeah, he's Danny McBride. I mean, like, so that was weird when I first saw it. I was expecting like some next level thing from him. Um, and then David shows up and it's like right back into the Prometheus yeah. stuff, of life creation. I love the scene wherever he just annihilated all of the, oh, yeah. uh, what the giant dudes. I forget what that was. Yeah. The, 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 uh, the engineers. Yeah. Yeah. I love that part. I thought that was cool. I do like him as a character. Like there's something so sinister about him that I like it. It's just, it's weird. It, it's just something about it. doesn't work for me. Um, you have the proto xenomorph. That's like pale, you get the carnage that I want. You get the alien like blood and guts and everything that I want. And then you finally get to the answer of how the xenomorph was created. And it's the chick from the first one. And I've been experimenting on her. And now I'm going to do this opera thing with the egg. And it was just it, okay, whatever. Literally pulling the strings. He was he was doing yeah, the uh... yeah exactly. And it's just now that's our canonical answer to where the xenomorphs come from and it's like i don't i kind of prefer not knowing see uh, right I'll, I'll take the counter to what you're talking about cody as a prometheus fan i i, I like that they gave us more of that storyline but again i i feel like both of us get ripped off here yeah um and you, trying you, to please everybody they right, keep and the, they do nothing right exactly uh please you're me. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead brian <laughs> nobody come on talk <laughs> Brian, go I ahead. I, I love Alien Covenant. I just, I loved it when I first watched it, and then I heard all the criticisms for it afterwards, and I was like, oh, oh no, maybe this is going to be one of those Justice League moments where I go back and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! This which was perfect was, moment. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? Um, but. You know, so, so I bought it on Blu-ray because it, it, you know it's, it's an alien film. I'm going to have it anyway. I'm going to own it for completion's sake. Um, and then I, you know, I got around to watching it, and I'm like, oh no, I'm a bit worried. Still loved it. Still loved it. I just again, I liked it's it more such, on rewatch. It's just still hmm. not very high for me. I just think it's such a thematically rich film. I just yeah. So I I did a. I did a video on it over on my other channel, the movie Evangelist, which pretty much sums up why I like it so much. I do think it's an exploration of, 
of uh, you know if, if you if you reject any notion of God, then you're left to your own devices, and if you're left to your own devices, that's not a pretty thing to see. Uh, it's it's just. We get David, basically. David, in his mind, well, David usurps God. His God is mankind, obviously. Mankind is his creator, and he usurps them. And then because of that, he he puts himself in the position of God, and there are no rules for him. There are no limits to where he will go. And it's it's an exploration of that. It's it's Nietzschean idea, ideas, you know. It's God is dead. Well, if God is dead what does that mean and well we we get david and it's it's an ugly sight it's it's scary brian are you at all frustrated with this movie though knowing that that we're not going to get a we're not going to get a completion to that and people who are fans of the xenomorph prequel they don't have their proper start does that frustrate you at all um i i'm not I, at the moment i am still holding out hope that Ridley Scott will get to make his net, you know. His, I'm with his, you. I just don't think, film. I don't um, think if, there's if enough. He doesn't, if he doesn't, then I'm, then I'm a bit, oh, very, well, I'm very disappointed really uh, mm -hmm. because I liked where it was going. I like the fact that David is the one who's taking center stage. You know, it, a lot of people, uh, one of the big criticisms is, oh, he's moving into AI stuff rather than, you know, rather than the alien law. And I'm sorry, but right AI's from been the pretty integral. It's been mm. very integral mm. right from the first film. I haven't heard Mo that criticism, but it's pretty dumb. So, <laughs> so much of that first film is all about the, the, the way that Ash, this android, relates to his human, uh, you know, the, the, the people on the ship, his counterparts. his counterparts, his cohorts, so to speak, is how he relates to them. He's supposed to be their subordinate, but actually he's kind of taking orders from from other channels, which makes him feel somehow superior. So he's getting a taste of that kind of, you know, godlike you know, have, having one up over my creator's kind of vibe about it. So that's something Ridley Scott's always been interested in. This isn't new ground for him. This isn't something he's just randomly chosen to go off on. It's, he's always been interested in it uh, within this franchise. And then much of what made Aliens interesting to watch was the way Ripley interacted with Bishop, knowing, you know, that 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 history that she has with AI and how does that affect this relationship with Bishop? Can she ever truly look at an AI as being anything close to human? Can she trust it? You know, and so all that stuff thematically, it's it's the it's in the DNA of this franchise. So all these people who say, oh well, why is it going off on David being a main character and all this AI nonsense? It's just I don't get that criticism at all. For me, it's the next logical step. It's a perfect place to take the franchise in. And David, quite frankly, is one of the most fascinating characters we've had in recent memory uh, with regards to, to cinema. So, yeah, give me more of that as far as I'm concerned. Brian, when your baby puts this cap on your voice level, you can make anything sound good because it's just very calm and calculated. And I'm like, he's convincing me. <laughs> Sean, you, uh, you okay? Yeah, Sean. Uh, a couple of. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Lindsay Chat said he that he wanted to make it. sure I was actually yeah. here and not just a screen grab of me. So, <laughs> got a newspaper to from today. Isn't that what they do? <laughs> uh, Sean, quick thoughts on Alien Covenant. When it's an alien movie, I enjoy it. It's um, a, a safe, nice little story about colonists, something a little bit different, but familiar enough. The end of you know people getting eaten on a ship and then being blown out the airlock. Very common, classic alien type stuff. So when it's an alien movie cool when it's a prometheus sequel um it's just the same sort of problems that i had before maybe a little bit more coherent but um 
similar just frustrations of like David shows up and then you've got was it him and Walt sitting down like here yeah, I'll some some super you. like what, product, what are yeah, yeah, and like it, it just kind of just feels so pretentious to me. Like <laughs> just out of the blue, we're we're talking about all all of the um, poets and stuff like that. It's just not doesn't really interest me. And then once again, um, as I mentioned when talking about Prometheus of the prequel problem, answering questions I was not asking with answers I do not like. And this being the explanation for where the xenomorphs come from, I'd much rather it just be a mystery of these creatures. That it's it's more terrifying that they're just creatures out there. It's more interesting to me if they're um, things that predators discovered and used to, to train off of, mm. as opposed to David has just found some goo and this sort of experimenting with it, and then it repeats the problem of Alien Three in a different, totally different way. But that movie ends with yeah, Na- uh, Naomi reports Naomi Rapace Rapace, yeah. saying, I'm going to find paradise and I'm going to, whatever she says at the end of that movie. Not for long. So, so she's like, <laughs> I'm going to go do something. And then she's like, whatever happened to her? And he's like, oh yeah, I killed her after she fixed me and experimented <laughs> on her. And it's like, they set up all this stuff about the, you know, space age bodybuilders. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I just dropped that stuff out the window and they all died. <laughs> and so it's, it's just a lot of stuff that it's like felt like we set up something it was like okay I wonder what they're going to do with it nope it's just they're dead oh I wonder what she's going to do oh she's dead too I've made a candelabra of her body look <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then likewise it has a, a lot of the same sort of just people behaving really dumb that they had in Prometheus of like hey <laughs> guy from Watchmen uh, the blue penis guy hey look look I I know what you think I'm super shady and suspicious. Can you look in this thing that looks super shady and suspicious? <laughs> that is awesome. So uh, yeah, I, I really liked it too. I now that I'm thinking about it, it's top three for me. So like I said, it when it it's a lot more pleasant for me to watch because the first forty five minutes and the last thirty minutes have the stuff I like. That middle hour is more the stuff that it's just like, uh, Ridley, if you wanted to do this, if you wanted to have all your musings about creators and creations, why don't you just do something different? Why did you have to tie that Mm. to the origins of the Xenomorphs? And I think that to me, both of these movies, I just feel the tension of what Ridley Scott really wants to do and the fact that to be able to get the budget to do it, it had to be an alien prequel and therefore, yeah. there's a conflict in the movie that uh, it doesn't doesn't work for and me. Nobody gets it. Perfect segue into what I want to ask Brian to close this out. So, if Ridley Scott does in fact get a budget for a third film, do you feel like they're going to let him do what he wants, or do you feel like they're going to mandate some things like, okay, everybody that had the loudest voices in Alien Covenant? got pissed when you put the Prometheus stuff in there and told everybody on the internet it's not really an alien movie like the trailer said it was, now you have to make an alien movie. Do you think that's going to happen? And would you even want that if, if he is in fact directing it? I, th- I think the sure sign as to what decision is made is whether or not Ridley Scott is directing. Mm-hmm. Because if they put those kind of mandates on him, he'll just walk away from it. I, he's not that kind of filmmaker. So, you didn't feel the compromise in Alien Covenant at all, or do you feel like that was his movie from start to finish? I, I, I feel like it was his movie. I, he's, he's 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 always been, you know, with the prequels, he's always been working his way slowly up to mm-hmm. the xenomorphs. Um, so, I, I think you know the, the the people who didn't like Prometheus are going to turn around and say, "Oh, he's just stuck him in there now to keep everyone happy." But no, we we knew it made he was me a little working happier. up there. <laughs> yeah, no, he did. But that's I don't think. But I don't think that's the reason it's there. I don't think Scott said, "Right, we've got to have twenty minutes of alien action at the end to keep them happy." He's he, you know, he's. This is a prequel series which shows us how they how they get there, and yeah. it just it just it feels natural to me that that would be there. So, go on, CP. Uh, it's it's Disney's money now. I say yeah. they should go ahead, uh, green light something like this. Because what what would they make Covenant for? Fifty? A little bit, a little bit more than fifty. So uh, I don't know. 
Uh, so I mean, they're putting they're putting big budget stuff on their channel anyway. You know, take a hundred million, split it between him and Neil Blomkamp. Say, go ahead, you guys, make your movies. Yes. And 100. 100 what? million. 100 million budget. That was the budget. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Well. Okay. <laughs> all right. Ask him if he could do it for half. Uh, <laughs> um, you yeah. have one location. Yeah. Here's your half. Here's your half. Split the two. Give Neil, us, here's 75. Right, right, right. <laughs> give us give us the alien movies that, that Blom, Blomkamp was making and let let Ridley make whatever movie he was going to make and just let them do their thing. And Fox, excuse me, Disney can go ahead and figure it out later, figure out what they're going to put in the movie theaters because that's that's a big thing right now. You know, theatrical mm -hmm. releases. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you have a channel now. Just just. Sounds just, good. Just, just go. I, I want the Blom Camp movie for sure. Yep. Uh, I, I I do for the sake of completionism. I don't like tail ends being left. I'll mm -hmm. take another Ridley Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely want the the proper follow up to Aliens. Give me everybody. Uh, Jeepers Creepers came in at number eight. Uh, I had it the highest at six. Absolutely love this movie. Uh, Sean pretty good split there. He had it at fifteen. Uh, Brian at nine. CP at ten. Uh, this is a movie very similar to what Brian was saying about walking in cold. It was Halloween night. It was 2001, so 9-11 had just happened. Uh, and, and much like this year, there was a lot of debate about is it safe for kids to go out, trick-or-treat, all that stuff. My parents decided no, uh, so we sat in. We watched horror movies, uh, or we watched movies. My dad was dating this woman at the time, and she had an, a daughter that was about my age, and so they let us pick movies. She picked Dr. Doolittle 2 mm, nice. for Halloween night. Halloween classic. Yeah, <laughs> I picked Jeepers Creepers. It was horror movie. That's all I knew about it. Horror movie, cool name. Put the movie in, and it just took me on a ride. I had no idea what to expect. And like Brian said, it, it starts off, and it's like this Hitcher movie where it starts off brilliantly with that truck just chasing these kids down. And I love that shot, how far away it is, where it's just it just slowly in the background just mm -hmm. comes up behind them, and then wah! Um, really good characters and, and a great brother sister dynamic too between Justin Long and um, I forget the actress's name, but his sister, uh, uh it, it, Gina Phillips, I think is that could yeah, be right. I think it's Gina Phillips, but anyway, they're awesome. So you don't mind at all watching them the whole movie, and the movie just slowly peels back the onion of what this actually is. It's a chase movie, then it's like this revenge thriller where he knows that they've seen what he's done. And just really grimy stuff, and then it slowly becomes this monster movie, and ends on this really grim note that you know my my sadistic ass likes. So I want I, I love Jeepers Creepers. Uh, Victor Salvo aside, this is one of, if not my favorite, like postmodern, um, post two thousand uh, horror film. I love it, absolutely love it. That's what makes Jeepers Creepers three such a sting for me. Um, Brian, we'll go to you for Jeepers Creepers. Everything you just said, and I've already, <clears throat> but yeah, basically already said what CP? I had to say about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's get to the top. Sean? <laughs> yeah, so I had it low on my list. I think we can all agree this is one of the worst movies we've ever seen. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, you know, to me, it's just kind of a, a, a random horror movie that came out almost 20 years ago that's memorable for Justin Long being in it. That intro! That <laughs> It's a good sequence, but that's what it felt like. The, the movie feels a little bit like the, like you describe it as, you know, unpeeling the onion and multiple layers and kind of progressing. To me, it, it feels unfocused. It mm. felt like the, the director had a bunch of different ideas that he liked. Yeah. And so then he came up with a story. It's like, what if you're driving down this road in the middle of nowhere and then this car starts chasing you and you can't get away from it? What if there was this farm and you went to go look at it and you found a bunch of bodies? What if, and it just like each one of them feels like a different kind of what if scenario for me. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's been one that I've never, you know, I, I just don't think about it much. Sean, have and you I've, seen Joyride? No, I haven't. Okay. Ooh, that's a good one to watch. I like that. Yeah, I, I, I'd be intrigued to hear what you have to say about Joyride in a parallel to Jeepers mm -hmm. Creepers because they're, they're very similar. They're just getting chased throughout the whole movie. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's just, Interesting. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I keep derailing you. I apologize. Written by so, J.J. Abrams as well. Yeah, so that's what I, um, so I was aware of it because of the J.J. Abrams connection to it. Um, 
when I believe my wife has seen it. Of she doesn't even watch horror movies, so it's one of the ones <laughs> she's mentioned. But the way the universe is played out, well, Paul Walker is is and Paul, Stark yeah. raving naked in that movie, so that that well, probably and Steve Jobs <laughs> sold me uh, Paul Walker, <laughs> and then the cherry on the top is the lack of clothing. <laughs> Woo! Uh, so I know what I'm watching tonight. Go right now to the store and get it. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of a really funny story. We were watching this at my parents' house. And it gets to that scene, the diner scene, where they're both, you know, ass naked walking in. <laughs> and my dad just, as, as a joke, said, because my, you know, my, my mom was out there, my two sisters were, you know, teenage age. He's like, hey, we got Paul Walker's ass on the screen. And my 10-year-old brother comes around the corner. Huh? And we're like, damn, dude. What the hell? <laughs> like, that's one of the, the moments that we continuously give him shit about. <laughs> So back to Jeepers Creepers, you know, sorry. <laughs> it, it's kind of interesting to me because it's not a movie that it would have ever occurred to me that there would be, you know, that you know Cody would be saying, "Oh, this is the best horror movie of the 21st century." Mm-hmm. Like it's not a movie that I would even think about people would put it in that category. <clears throat> so uh-huh. that's just kind of my take on it. And it's not that I like guys. It's not that I thought, "Oh, this is garbage." Why would people? It, no, it's just, oh yeah, it was perfectly fine for what it was, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of creature feature. Couple kids getting killed, um, or on the run, and one of them get killed. Um, that's that's as much I kind of thought about it. So it's it's interesting to me to have Cody saying what he's saying about it, have it so high up on his list. I like I would not have expected that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I do think the beginning's stronger than the end. I'll say that. I love it all. And the end feels like it's out of blue. Both times I watched it, I was like, I'm pretty, doesn't this one have like a really out of the blue ending? And it's like, oh, well, it's just over. I love it. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I thought it's very ballsy for him to end it that way because Justin Long at the time was one of those guys where it's like, oh, the, you know, he was in a lot of comedies and it, just to be able to just. He was also the Mac guy. Take that, that dude out. Yeah. 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 So uh, <laughs> this next one is the most shocking placement to me on this list. Number seven, Predators. Hmm. Good for Predators. Made it all the way up here. Um, and it's ahead of where we ranked it. That's that's uh, the way yeah. statistics works. That's interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did uh, our work, Sean. We did it good. <laughs> yeah. CP and Sean agreed at eight. I had it at ten. Brian had it the lowest at thirteen, but still liked it. Um, this is a movie that has grown over time for me. When I first saw it, I didn't really like it, mostly because of Adrian Adrian uh, Brody uh, and, and some other elements to it. Um, but every time I rewatch it, I like it more. Maybe it's because there's been shittier movies that have come out since. And I'm like, oh, well, at least that movie is pretty good. Um, so Predators to me is a cool concept. It, that's the best thing about it is like, what if we had this training ground where all these different people with all these different screwed up past gets thrown in? You, know, you got the soldier, you got the murderer, you got the cartel guy, you got Jailbird. Uh, and let's just unleash them. We'll have different types of Predators, we'll have Predator dogs. That's the best part about this to me. It's some cool action, some cool stuff. It, it taps in the best to that feel of the first movie uh, than all the other sequels. Not quite get in there, but close enough. <clears throat> the biggest negative for me, though, is just that Adrian <coughs> Brody, I don't yeah. buy yeah. in the role that they want me to buy him in. I think that he's almost like, uh, we'll get there. Uh, I think he would have worked better in one of the other roles. It's like, yeah. it's not that I don't buy him, like he can't be a soldier. It's just that. They play him up so much. They give him the Christian Bale voice, and like, they're giving him <laughs> he, the he, iconic he, Arnold lines. Yeah, and, I think that's like they set him up against Arnold with the way that they do stuff with the character. He repeats the lines. He takes the shirt off. There's fire at the end, and so you just immediately have to contrast the two because of the way they position him. And I, so I think they set him up a little bit for failure by comparison with what they were doing. Yeah. I liked when they set up Machete for bait. That was a really badass and creepy. That is movie. cool. Yeah, that's all I have, I have to say. Movie. I like the twist with. Uh, I like the twist with uh, Venom, whatever the hell his name is. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that uh, Lawrence Fish, Fishburne gets to put in his, you know, Tim Robbins character from War of the Worlds. That was, mm. you know, he kind of gets out of the movie in a second, but uh, mm. I, I, I like that whole thing when he mm. comes in. Who are, who are you? I'm the guy you don't fuck with. And I'm like, mm. I believe him. So, Brian, why am I wrong? Why is Adrian Brody awesome? I, I just, it's just not so, for me. The sign of a good actor is someone who does something that you don't really see them in, and 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 they work. Now, obviously, it didn't work for you, but mm-hmm. uh, when I saw him, I, he convinced me as a badass soldier. Uh, he put the, you could tell he put the time in for uh, putting the work into his body. He looked pretty. Uh, 
pretty beefed up in that film, uh, you know, and, and coming come from the likes of uh, The Pianist, where he's practically a rake. Uh, was it The Pianist? Yeah. Yes, isn't it? yes. Yeah. Just you keep know, saying that. Yeah, playing a, a Jewish concentration camp survivor yeah. guy, and it's like, you know, oh, too. very serious, very dark kind of role, you know, very dramatic. And then he goes to blockbuster, beef yourself up, action movie mode, and I was convinced by it. So because of that, I, I just, you know, he, he sold me. Um, I, I, I think you're right. I always think it's a mistake to put classic lines from, it's something that annoys me about sequels in general, but that's... That's not Brody's fault. That's a writing thing. Uh, as the character, he convinced me. Uh, I, I just think, yeah. So, good deal. Yeah, that one surprised me the most when I saw how high it made it for all of us. For for me on my ranking, this is basically the cutoff for like um, mm -hmm. all, everything above this. We're kind of like these are like classic movies, mm -hmm. and this one is the one right before that of like I. It's certainly not a classic. It's not a particularly memorable film. But to me, it's just like a solid, entertaining Predator movie that yep. it, it, with a great cast. Uh, I don't think we talked about like Walton Goggins. As this guy. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and it, I mean, like delivers these lines and he says something that's just like so outlandish. Like, whoa, I can't believe they put that in a movie. And then he's sitting next to it. It's like Topher Grace is like, yeah, yeah, totally. And then he walks away from the guy. And just this bonkers Walton Goggins character. You have like a, a Mahersha Ali, uh, you know, from you know, 10 years ago before he was kind of uh, mm -hmm. moved into much more prominent. And so it's just a fantastic cast. So just real solid. Solid. Not great film, but one that I'm a little bit surprised that people aren't a little bit more positive on it as just yeah. providing it more of what you want. You yeah. know, yep. it'll, it'll, it'll come back around. Yeah, it probably will. Number six was It Chapter One, as I call it now. Uh, CP and Sean had it pretty high at six and seven. I had it at eight. Brian screwed up our little pattern there and put it at <laughs> ten. Um, so I'm going to let Brian start this one. It. Um, well, I, I will say that my top ten movies. So this 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 was my number ten. My top ten movies, I think, are all outstanding. Uh, I, I, I mean, I've, I, I said it with regards to the top five earlier, but for me, it was the top ten of this year's thirty-one that that for me was just across the board fantastic. You know, so I think like eleven to twenty are, are made up of movies that are good. You know, they, they, they've got some some pretty good watchable stuff in there, and you know, things with redeeming points. Twenty one to thirty one is just bollocks. It, I'll never watch again. Chapter so. one. It, chapter one. Yes. <laughs> 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 I just, I really liked it. Uh, I just, uh, I just. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying I rated it the lowest from all of us lot, but I loved it. Um, I think chapter two makes me not like it as much <laughs> as I, project. yeah, <laughs> as I previously did. I think if, if if chapter two would have sealed the deal and had been as good, then as a whole, it would be up there a bit more. I think it, yeah, yeah but it kind of loses, too, actually. yeah, but uh. Yeah, Pennywise. A, a slight overuse of CGI, I think, but other than that, slight shit. Yeah, uh, that no, was my no, only no. negative with the movie. Honestly, was was mm -hmm. CGI. Uh, I, when they announced Andy Muschietti, I was like, oh man, he's the one that did Mama. That that really weird CGI creature at the end. Please don't do that. And that was my main takeaway from the movie that I was a little pissed about. Like even the opening scene, which is so fantastic with Georgie going out and, you know, the whole, the speech redone with Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise, I was like, man, this is freaking good. And then whenever that mouth opened up and clamped down, I was like, oh. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love the fact the fact that they showed him like without his arm. I was like, "Oh shit, yeah. they're, yeah, they're showing sure. it. Yeah. Shit. That, that, it's a it's a moment in that entire sequence that throws me off, but it throws me off a lot. It, huh. it's the same thing that I said about the thing uh, when I when I think about how much I love Tim Curry's Pennywise and what he was able to do with just makeup. Uh, mm -hmm. It disappoints me that they just go for that. It's like we're just going to put this computer generated thing on here. It, so that's the main thing that takes it back for me. Aside from that, I love the film. I love all the characters. 
Uh, I, I love the way that they set it in the eighties instead of the fifties and, and it works just as well. Um, I, I think that and those it cars feels are, very 1989. Like they yes, captured yes. 19, even to as someone that was about their age in 1989, even the way that they liked new kids on the block, but they didn't want their friends to know they liked new kids on the block. <laughs> that's what really happened. That's what, that, that's what that would have been like. I think there's like Nightmare on Elm Street 5 yeah, mm-hmm. in the theater and everything too, which is sad. Lethal but, Weapon 2 is on another one. and Oh, much better. Much better choice. All right, CP? <laughs> Saxophone. Uh, <laughs> we got, uh, uh, yeah, I, I really like Bill Skarsgård's take. It just, the CGI holds me back a little bit, but he, he does a lot physically too that you would swear is CGI but isn't. Uh, and it leaves it off in a fantastic place where you're like, yes, bring on Chapter 2. And like, like Brian says, now you're like, oh, okay. I'm just going to pretend this is one movie now. Um, yeah. Anything to add, gentlemen? Uh, I mean, I had it the highest. I just think it I, the CGI doesn't bother me, and therefore mm-hmm. I, I think it just kind of works on every level. But because Brian mentioned earlier that uh, a child is injured at the beginning of the movie, I've decided I have to move this back to number 28 <laughs> <laughs> to be consistent. I, I, I just think it really, you believe the kids, you care about the kids. There's really jarring terrifying images mm-hmm. and it, mm-hmm. it builds up the payoff at the end but it it's funny when it needs to be both funny with the kids and their dialogue uh while also make them making jokes that they wouldn't even understand and then mm-hmm. like yeah. you know pennywise can be funny while being terrifying it just it works on all, all every level i have Absolutely. to say that that the, of everything i could do without the jump scares i i thought the movie was strong enough without them yeah yeah. Well, that that pairs with the CGI, like especially mm-hmm. that one with the painting where he's a scared scared of the paint, and it's like the the crooked chick when she comes up <laughs> for a jump scare. Like, there's moments like that. I'm with you. Um, all right, moving into the prestige now with number five, Steven Spielberg's classic Jaws. Sean had it at two, uh, I had it at four, Brian at five, CP at six. So now we're getting into where our numbers are really not that different. <laughs> I think yeah. that this is the one, the one thirty-one on thirty-one, where we all pretty much agree which ones are the the top tier material. Uh, Sean Jaws, yes. why is it the greatest film ever? I didn't say greatest; it's the second greatest <laughs> film. Ever. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's a movie that's the definitive shark movie that everybody knows. That I, I can't like shark movies are kind of their own little genre, mm-hmm. and there is not any debate. There is not one person that questions what the best shark movie of all time is. And it just goes back to a great set of characters in building tension properly. And, you know, it's the movie that wasn't Spielberg's first movie, but it was the one where he really came into his own and started to create the blockbuster as we know it. And, um, yeah, so many quotable lines, memorable sequences, but just uh, a fantastically made film on every CP. level. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I, I mean, I, I was the lowest. I, I was the lowest, but um, you know, it's it's hard at this point. They're all they're all like five star films at this point. Yeah. So uh, it's it's basically semantics or personal preference. And you know, as somebody who doesn't go to the beach, maybe that's why it. You know, I know. I would never get in the water, so I'm fine. That thing will never hurt me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe that's why. But it, it is. It's brilliant. It's you know, we're, we're there, guys. We we made we made it. Brian, what did we make it to? Uh, yeah, it's it's. <laughs> I'm trying not to wake. <laughs> it's just, it's uh, it's just a, it's a classic for good reason. Um, it's a horror movie that. You, you can show your kids, mm-hmm. um, hmm. but it feels very adult. Um, you know, it's, it's it's not one of those where you grow up and you watch it and it loses its impact because the impact is rooted in character development. Um, you know, it's rooted in these three guys getting together. They're kind of different from each other at times there are odds and you you know you have that prolonged scene where he talks about the story on the uss indianapolis and suddenly becomes a three-dimensional character and not just someone who's you know mean or, or hard hardened for the sake of it it's all of a sudden you understand this guy 
Um, and it's just like all, all of it. It's, it's the whole film just builds these three characters up. Um, Dreyfus's character to a lesser extent than the other two guys, but even so, when you get these three together at the boat, by, uh, on the boat together, by the end of it, you're invested. You are you are with these guys. You want all three of them to survive. Um, and yeah, it's just that's that's great storytelling. Um, and, that, and then if you just look at the technical aspects of things, the way that Kubrick moves the camera and and it's just at Kubrick, the way that Spielberg moves the camera and you know he knows what he's doing. Uh, you know he, he he can do things in one shot that most directors would would do in four or five shots um, because of his blocking and the way he moves things. So it's, it's just. It's expertly done. It's brilliant film. Yeah. Uh, I, I, this is one that my dad put in a lot on Laserdisc, so I have a lot of memories of watching Jaws. Like I said, I, at one point I thought Jaws 2 was better because we got to see the shark, shark more. But uh, Jaws is a classic for every reason that you guys listed. Uh, it, it's a shark movie where the most memorable scene in it is about a guy telling a story of the USS Indianapolis. So that tells you that it's it's got much more in the bag than shark stuff. Uh, it, it's a really good three act structure too, which is what I kind of honed in on this last time when I watched it. Where you have Act One, where the shark comes in, starts eating people. You have all the scares and the carnage, and then you have Act Two, where it's all the political debate with him and the the mayor about you know the safety over the profit of the town and the economy, uh, and you know the the red herring of hey we caught the shark, and then everybody's like I don't know I think the shark's bigger that tooth's pretty big. And then Act Three, where they're out on the ocean going to take the shark out, and it's a movie that just never stops. I mean, you, when you get to the end of the movie, you think like when when Robert Shaw's character is is taken and and is eaten, less than like what five minutes later, the movie's over. So as soon as that happens, the ship's going down. He shoots the shark. It's over. Like it never has like this moment of meandering. It just moves at a great clip. So yeah, Jaws is awesome. Moving on to number four, this was my number one, and that's John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, CP had it at four, Sean at five, Brian at three. So once again, pretty close with those ones. Um, this, along with The Lost Boys, I often debate my favorite horror film of all time. Um, it, it's one that I've watched for most of my life, and it just, I love, every time I rewatch it, I love it more. I love the exploration of paranoia. Um, I love the way that you have these group of characters where, you know, you don't necessarily get to know a lot about all of them, but you get to know just enough to know where each character is to a degree um, and, and to be entertained by the ensemble. Um, you got, you know, led by Kurt Russell, love Kurt Russell, love his character in this. Uh, the creature designs and the practical effects is the legacy of this movie 100%, and it's brilliant. It might still be my favorite practical effects ever in, in history. Um, uh, it, it's it's phenomenal. It ends on a down note, but it ends on an interesting little where, you know, you choose your adventure. Are they both the thing? Is one of them the thing? Is both of them human? Um, I love it. They're, it's a flawless film for me. Sean. You call it flawless. Uh, I see a total disaster is what I... Um, <laughs> so this is one that I hadn't... Uh, I watched it, you know, back... You know, 20 years ago when I first discovered John Carpenter, I guess it would have been over 20 years ago whenever Vampires came out and um, mm -hmm. Escape from L.A., uh, Carpenter's best. And, you know, I started watching through all of That was a joke. The, oh, was, I was like, not, Vampires? This, Wait, what? <laughs> this, both, I'm not saying either one of those is best. Hey, so, L.A. Um, just totally went over my head. I, I was stuck yeah. on Vampires. <laughs> you know, in the late 90s, he had... Those are the two that kind of yeah, came shit. out when I was getting into movies. I was like, what else has he done? Oh, Vampires yeah. is so, awesome. So, so checked out... Um, I like vampires a good bit more than uh, Escape from L.A. Uh, I like the concept more than the, fully the execution, but yes. Anyway, like sidetracked. Um, so I saw it then, and I, I watched it a few years later, so I think I'd only seen it a couple of times, and I don't think I'd fully appreciate it when I watched it. Maybe maybe somewhat because there's a episode of The X-Files that's very influenced by the exact same thing from the first season. It's one of the best episodes. And so I'd I seen that episode. I'd seen yeah. that episode, yeah, many, many times. So um, it didn't quite maybe hit me as hard on, on certain things as, as other people when I watched it. So re-watching it for this, um, I was able to watch it mostly with a fresh set of eyes, having not watched it in a long time. And it is... Uh, 
You guys are throwing me off. Hey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> they do that. We do it they to Brian, do too. <laughs> they do that. We're the kids that sit in the back. <laughs> I'm so yeah. sorry, Sean. It's so, so annoying. It's so annoying. Watching it with a fresh set of eyes 15 years later, uh, it's a really great film that, uh, you know, I've wasted the last 15 years not watching it more times. That it, oh. it is in that category that it should have been that, um, you know... Uh, and potentially, you know, my favorite Carpenter film. It is uh, mine, yeah. especially and, after um, all this like Halloween. It, it, yes, it does so many <clears throat> things so well with the paranoia, Mister X. The characters are flawed; they make mistakes; they sacrifice people they're not supposed to. Um, and then, of course, practical effects over oh. the, the crap we get these days. And it has an example of not only a great exploration of tension, but possibly the greatest jump scare of all time. Where's my little prop? Right here. In the blood test scene, mm -hmm. whenever, you know, they set up this whole sequence where it's like, I have this idea I think might tell us who the thing is. And you're as skeptical as the characters. You're like, ah, okay, yeah. let's see where this goes. And they do this great job of going through like six or seven of them where nothing's happening. And you're like, well, this is going to be a way. Somebody's just going to just going to thing out out of nowhere. And then right when the guy starts talking shit, he just hits it and is rah! and you're like, whoa, and it hits you out of nowhere. Um, that's that's my favorite jump scare of all time. Do we all agree that this is the best uh, effects movie on the list? It's It's got stiff competition with the Aliens movies, but yeah, it's 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 it's, no, it's, I, it's mine. I, I, I think I, I, I think I'm veering more towards Aliens, but I okay. certainly appreciate the work I, I, that's I think. Well. This movie, the effects are more on display. You, yeah. you're, it's more of like let's show off what we can do. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I watch Alien, Aliens, Predator, uh, I just feel like I'm watching a, a movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not thinking so much about the effects, and so okay. it, it's it's a little bit difficult to compare when they're, um, you know, when you do kind of the defib scene and then the chest opens up and bites his arms off. Mm. That's like a like, I don't think that looks remotely like a thing that would necessarily play out in real life. I know I'm looking at an effect, <laughs> but it's a it's an amazing effect. It's like, whoa, what did I just watch? Let's <laughs> rewind that and watch it again. And my wife that hates score is like, what was that? Let's see that again. <laughs> um, it's, it's They're kind of different ways to use effects. Whereas, you know, like the, the you know, like alien, Aliens is maybe, yeah. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. we're, we've been streaming so long now, I just ramble yeah. whenever I talk. Yeah. It's all just, <laughs> it all just <laughs> <plays. laughs> movie. Uh, Brian, did you have anything to add? Uh, well, much like Sean, I didn't see this film till fairly recently, to be honest, about, about three years ago. I first watched it. I, I, I walked in on my brother watching it with my parents when I was like 10 or something. And I walked in on the spider head scene, basically bricked it and then went to bed. Uh, I was just like, no, 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 can't take that. I was just, it, it, was, it was too much for me. So I, I, I went to bed and that was it. Never saw it since. Um, huh. And a few years ago, me and Graham, Man V Film, uh, we have a, we had a podcast called Brits on Flicks, and that came up as one of the the, the films we we decided to review. I thought, great, perfect opportunity to actually watch it all the way through now. Um, and I really liked it. Um, I, I wouldn't say I loved it, but I did really like it. But it just stuck with me. It wouldn't it like wouldn't get out of my head. Uh, so I had to watch it again and and then again, like Sean says, you watch it again and it's like it just you get more out of it. Each view in you you see something you didn't see before and it's just I, I don't think there's any question as to whether this is Carpenter's best film. I, I agree I think with you. And I think the I think the typical argument is laughable. Wait, have you seen Ghosts of Mars though? Uh... <laughs> the ward's coming in hot at the end there. <laughs> yeah, it's on another level. Um, number three, Predator. 
I had it the highest, strangely, at two. I would have thought Sean would have tied that one. We're at a uh, point yeah. where we're separated by two, really. I know. It, it was <laughs> tricky. It was really tricky on this one because of my wife. Uh, <laughs> Jaws is her number one, and so it, it, it messed up where I had to place that one. It was in the vows. I get it. It's, CP3, I, Sean 3, Brian 4. The same way I was deeply hurt at having to put Alien 3 so high, I was deeply hurt at having to put Predator so low. <laughs> I, I To make up for I even went out. I bought he, Predator Hunting Grounds, the video game. To make up for it, oh. even though it's a terrible game. Oh, so oh. I, I did the right thing. I guess <laughs> this is the manliest, most testosterone fueled movie ever made, in my opinion. Uh, it's just it's dripping with testosterone from that epic little Dylan handshake thing at the beginning. I mean, all of them are like glistening with sweat, and you got Carl Weathers, and it, it, it's it's awesome eighties cheese for that alone. But then you bring in the Predator, one of my favorite creature designs, one of my favorite villains of all time. Uh, Sean and I, uh, uh, strangely, one of our little mind meld moments, talk about this a lot, where it's one of the few, maybe the only Arnold like vehicle movie that doesn't just feel like the Arnold Schwarzenegger show. It's, it's he's playing a character that serves the story and serves the villain of the Predator. Um, and it doesn't really just feel like, oh, Arnold's the guy at the end that's going to take him down because it's Arnold. Like You feel like that character has earned it at that point. Um, it, it's a, a badass movie. It's one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> love it. It's a number two. CP. Yeah, it, it's the same. Look, look, look. <laughs> CP, CP wants to eat. I need to be like a just of news. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Yeah, same. We've said it all. <laughs> Sean, any thoughts or should we move to number two? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a perfect sci-fi action movie. Great yeah, characters and yeah, uh, even like Dutch. When you watch it, and you realize like he's written to be a very intelligent character. He's so macho and muscular. You don't think about it that way, but all along the way, he's ob observing things. He's observing weaknesses and oddities. He's nervous about his buddy, and so when you get to the end and he outsmarts the predator, it's all built into it. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's it makes sense the way it plays out. Um, and it's just, it's so good. Like, this is a movie that, uh, there's very few movies that have ever really scared me. I've just never been scared by movies. Predator, the first time I watched it, Late Night on Cable, was one that kind of got under my skin a little bit. And it made me actually kind of tense after I watched it. Predator and the Three Acts feels like three separate movies. And, and they're all complete. An intro mm -hmm. conflict res resolution in the first act, intro conflict resolution in the second act, intro conflict resolution in the third act. And, and they all work. Yeah. There are yeah. like three separate movies in it, and, and it fits. It all works really well. Absolutely. Coming in hot at number two, Ridley Scott's original Alien. Cody. Uh, this, was, <laughs> this was CP's favorite. I had it at number five, Sean at four, Brian at two. I was actually surprised Brian didn't pick that one. I know it's probably a razor-thin difference between uh, his number one and his number two. Uh, for me, like I said, I've had it at five. It's not really worth justifying. But <laughs> I, I grew up watching Aliens like on repeat. I didn't visit Alien until that same Blu-ray set came out because we didn't own a copy of Alien. My dad was always an Aliens fan. Um, mm -hmm. So when I watched Alien for the first time, it was also the first time I watched Alien 3. And when you grow up watching Aliens and this big bombastic movie, tons of action, Marines, it's it's... When you go to watch the first one after so many years of that, thinking that is what Alien movies are, Alien is kind of a totally different world. It's mm -hmm. slower, more methodical, you know, it, it deliberately paced. It's brilliant, but um, it doesn't have the rewatch factor for me that Aliens does. Like, Aliens is a movie that I could watch multiple times a year. Alien, I might not pop in once a year. It might be a, a bi yearly movie for me. Brilliant, um, but uh, yeah, that's just a. The order I watched them is the only reason it's at number five. CP number one, why is it? Oh, it's it's a. Per, I mean, I don't know if people consider it this, but it's it's it really is kind of a slasher movie. It's it's a it's a yeah. it's a slash and kill, and, and it's 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 a chase. Sigourney Weaver, for all intents and purposes, is a final girl. Mm -hmm. Um. And it it you know it it fills out. It sets up pretty nice. Uh, perhaps the the best slasher film ever and i i prefer slashers over action movies uh especially classy ones like this 
<laughs> um, Few and far between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the one I can I can confidently say. Oh yeah, well this is my favorite. Now what? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, yeah. That Sean. Did... Oh, sorry. No, no, good, good. Yeah, um, you know, I, I uh, Ripley is my favorite female character in cinema. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously we're not to the sequel that's more the action film that's more my thing but um, you know as a horror film as a slow burn even it's just a movie that uh, you know it's set a hundred years in the future or whatever but like they feel like you know space truckers very yeah. normal type dynamics of the crew of you have the guys that work on the lower devil levels and then you have the captain and then you have, of course like everybody knows you always have that ai throwing things off trying to kill you by shoving a magazine down your throat um it just um yeah it's it's just it's these two movies are so different but they complement <laughs> each other so well brian number two yeah it's 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 a film that just oozes atmosphere it's like the production design on it. Mm -hmm. you, you don't even need sound on this film. Hmm. You, you could stick this on in the background with the sound completely turned off and you're still transfixed by the, the images. The, the first time I saw the Blu-ray of this one, um, I even rem remember the exact location. It was at my buddy's. Uh, he does a, his own film festival for his birthday every year, went over to his <coughs> place and watched the, like, the Blu-ray of this movie. And I don't know if I hadn't seen it a few years or if I'd only just watched the DV or whatever it was. I was watching it being like, I can't believe this movie's 35 years old. These mm. images are so mm. good. Watch like, it in 4K. Holy shit. I mean, they they yeah. cleaned it up. It just, it looks so good. I'm sorry, I cut you off. But yeah, it's, it's no, just no, a no. gorgeous film. Yeah, no, it is. It is it's just like, literally, like you say, it, it doesn't age. That's the thing. The only thing in this movie that has aged is the computer monitors yeah <laughs> that's that's it literally analog you, switches <laughs> yeah like if they if they um did you know if scott did like a rejig of it like he's done with most of his other classics where <laughs> where they just touched up those computer monitors so that they looked a lot more modern this could easily be a film that was made today because those images are just so strikingly original. And, and, and like I say, they just ooze atmosphere, every aspect of it, from the ship they're on to when they go down to the planet, the way the, the, the alien is, the alien eggs are kind of inside that weird organic looking ship. And it's just, it's just everything about the alien design itself from the face hugger out of the eggs to just everything. It's kind of the Jaws complex, though. The less they show of the alien, the the better, especially with Alien 1, because there's there's a shot or two, especially the more HD quality we get, where it's a dude in a suit, and it's just like, yeah. oh, no, I don't want to see that. That That's a little too much there. That, like, yeah, yeah it, I, it, it, you want the jaw, Jaws complex. Don't, don't show us too much, because the, if you see it, it's, it's just a dude with a weird helmet on. It, it's really kind of funky if you see the alien outfit. Um, until you get to aliens and then it's like oh, sure oh, right right yeah, yeah. boom but uh but no, it just yeah just it's an absolute classic just for good reason uh just fr from a visual standpoint it's like it's off the charts good it's like it, it's from a time when ridley scott was just he, he cared you can see it on screen he cares about the visuals he cares about every single frame that he's putting on there and uh, he, you know did the same with blade runner uh, as much as he had problems making that film you know it's, it's just you can see this is a guy who cares about every frame um so yeah uh, it's it's slow definitely slow i can understand it not being for everyone uh but again it's just that's that's literally the only thing you can say about it that that would stop me watching it but it's it's, it's just a great film for sure and then coming in at number one holding the crown for this year's 31 on 31 sean and brian apparently are correct it is aliens <laughs> cp had it at two i had it at three it was a razor thin difference between that and predator for me uh, Sean, I'll let you take the lead on this one. Why is Aliens number one out of 31? So, um, 
Pretty simple. Um, I'm more of an action guy. <laughs> Ridley Scott builds fantastic foundation, amazing human character, amazing uh, villain creature. in the Xenovars creature. And then you take another fantastic director who is more in line with my the way I'm wired, mm-hmm. and you just get once again a perfect sci-fi action movie. And where it, where it, of course, it has more action. It has it's a little bit faster paced because of all of that. But the other thing that I love about it is that relationship with Newt that you have Ripley's lost everything and forms this new family, especially with Newt, a little bit of Hicks in the mix, and that the way that Ripley is so maternal but such a badass, and she's surrounded by all these machine gun firing Marines, but she's still the brave one in the mix because she's willing to do the hard work to save this girl that is her new daughter. And so, um, and then of course, just an amazing score from James Horner too. So, love it. Brian, number one. Just, oh man, so so good. So this is in my top ten movies of all time. It's just, yeah. You got to bear in mind context as well of when it was made. What what Cameron did with this sequel is is now something that everybody replicates with regards to a sequel you know it's, it's just he it's a completely different film you know like cp for, said the first one is a, it's a slasher film in yeah. space the the natural inclination there if you're making a sequel is is to is to rehash it to so get get another spaceship have an alien stalking around, but Cameron says, "Actually, that's been done. What are we going to do here? War movie, action, boost it up to, you know, up to number eleven. But not just that. I'm going to give a toss about my characters. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to root this story within the theme of motherhood and really explore it. In, in, you know, if, if this was a film in in lesser hands." That alien queen would be in there just for the sake of having something bigger than what was in the first film. Hey, look, it's another alien, but it's bigger and badder. That's not what Cameron's interested in. That queen is 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 specifically tied to the theme that is running throughout the movie. You've got on one hand this human mother figure in Ripley going up against this mother figure in the alien queen. And it's 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 all so perfectly written it's also perfectly put together um you know it's just like you can underestimate aliens i think and just, just as you can with terminator 2 and just say oh it's a big action film that's you know perfectly executed in the special effects department but that's it but it's not that's not just it it's so thematically rich and you know, it credits you with intelligence. And if you want to see that stuff, you want to find it, it's there for you to delve into. But on top of that, it's just a damn good action film with some of the best action set pieces that you've ever seen. Um, you know, that end fight between Ripley and the Ending Queen, just incredible. So, yeah, I love this film. Absolutely love it. Uh, like I say, it's in my top ten of all time, so... It is also in my top ten of all time. CP, anything to add? Yeah, it it's it's built on a very strong film to start with, so they don't have to waste time adding to the world building. I mean, yep. the world that that we're we're in is already extremely strong, so we can kind of hit the ground running. And this movie essentially does that by by the half an hour mark. You're you're balls deep in uh, a war movie, and and they're they're off and running. It's it's. I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, I'll try to choose my terminology a little differently next time. <laughs> a lot of times my mother watches videos that I'm in, and she could have been offended by that. I, well, wow. Apologies, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything you guys said, I don't think there's any other ground to cover on it. It's a classic. It's another movie that I watched constantly with my dad. He had the special edition laser disc along with the special edition laser disc of T2. Uh, these were in constant rotation. Love it. 
uh, one of the best action movies, sci-fi movies, sequels. Uh, Ripley, one of the best Final Girls characters ever. The Final Showdown. Uh, you got a lot of memorable side characters too. Michael Bean's awesome. Uh, you, Bill Paxton, rest in peace, was great. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's awesome. Uh, so, and even playing off the first movie of the AI is evil, and so Ripley doesn't trust. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just the the way that it plays out that, you know, he's one of the people that's reliable to the very end. Um, it just does it. It's just such a smart sequel that knows how to not rehash and but build upon. Yeah. Uh, even yeah. as we're talking about this, maybe there is hope for Avatar 2, oh. 3, 4, oh. and however many more he does, because this movie was so good. It, well, I'm really it, looking forward to those Avatar sequels. I've got to say, I it, really am. They better be good because he's not going to yeah. give us anything else in his career. <laughs> mm. Yeah, if you could build off of a, a strong first part and really, if 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 you wanted to do a double bill and and it works and you you're fine throughout the whole time, I think that's that's even more endearing to to both films because Alien, Terminator, uh, like I said before, the Thing actually. If if you watch those two together, it's it's quite an interesting experience. Absolutely. Well, that is it, guys. That is this year's Autop Stream 31 on 31. Before we get out and start doing our outros, we do have something cool to announce. So um, as you guys know, this originally was a, an annually thing. This year has been a very weird year, to say the least. So this is actually the third 31 on 31 <laughs> that we have done this year. And it's going to be three of four. We're going to squeeze in one more in December. And get excited because the big three are returning to off top stream. That is right. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, Christopher Nolan, and David Fincher. We're going to be doing Kill Bill as one entry, so don't math check me. But when you add all of them together, when mm -hmm. Mank comes out here in November, I believe, November, December, we will have 31 films to rank with these three awesome directors, which I think is safe to say... All three is probably in our top five directors of all time. Yeah, this uh, is gonna, this is going to be nasty. This, this is the, is the be, polar yeah. opposite of what we just did because yeah, yeah. thirty one <laughs> is good. <laughs> yes, it's going to be a palate cleanser. So all four of us will be returning in December to do that one. Um, we also have Zach Pope who has uh, joined us. Uh, if you guys remember when I did The Last of Us Part 2, he was on my live stream spoiler chat. So he's going to be joining us. I have two other people that I have invited that are. On the fence at the moment as far as scheduling so there may be more of us or it may just be us five but uh keep your eyes peeled that's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be some uh, some crazy hijinks with that one um brian we got your info a little earlier sean where can we find you on youtube and do we have anything to look forward to here recently or soon uh if you search for me on the youtube if you look up sean chandler you will either find a guy that looks like me and talking about movies or you'll find out that i recently transferred to be playing for the panthers i am a safety in the nfl one of those two Ooh. is true about me if you look up sean chandler if you go to the twitter it's kirk never died that is a star trek reference not a kurt cobain reference though i also do love nirvana hmm. <laughs> all right i have an amendment to make Hang on. Lindsay, since you want to open your mouth, you're going to be joining us on December 2, and you don't have anything to say whether or not you're busy or not. So uh -huh. that, now there is now six of us officially slated. <laughs> I was going to do a sidebar conversation, but now since you want to put the shit public, welcome back to Autop Stream, my friend. CP, where can we find you on the YouTubes? Oh, Willis Greedia. Don't ask what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you like uh, movies with feces come uh me. yeah you know and i'm um, right around the corner i'm talking about um what's it talk uh, cuties cuties i'm talking about cuties in a couple of days because that is what i want to be doing with myself <laughs> i think i suggested that to you too so that might be yeah, my fault i'll take yeah, full credit you for that. and others yeah oh kids dancing around provocatively yeah sure <laughs> French film, sure. CP would love this. <laughs> CP cover this. All right, guys. So that is it. Uh, all of our channel information, well, not mine. Obviously, you're watching mine. But all of the channel information <coughs> heads will be down in the video description below once I get done with the stream, uh, as well as links to our 31s. So that'll probably just be what I use as the link. So if you haven't seen all of our individual videos,
videos. Highly recommend you go check them all out. We had a lot of fun with this one. Obviously, we had a lot to say at a four-hour stream. My God. Um, thank you for sticking with us for the 178 that are still listening to us talk. We will see you guys in December. And thank you for watching. Number four may surprise you. Number four might. Thank <laughs> you.